yeah, stuff that we shouldn't. <laughs> uh, that makes sense. So, you know, it begins. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you gotta do. Sometimes you don't need a new flight stick, but hey, but you sometimes want you want a new, a new flight stick. <laughs> Only like several hundred dollars. I'm not gonna oh, buy a several man. hundred dollar flight stick. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. I am worried. I have a plenty of good <laughs> I have a plenty good one right now. It's just once you move and you have a bigger space where you can put in like the whole cockpit setup, then you can get the, the good flight stick. This is this we can is clap so and then over. I'll tell the very funny story that I that will take two seconds that I yeah, <laughs> is that it, trying to encourage us to clap. Yeah, so it is yeah. 20, 20, 20, 20 and 20, 25, 20 and 25. Got it. Oh wait, hold on. My nope. Shit's on. Nope. No. Uh, <laughs> My noise removal. Okay, thirty. Oh. We'll do thirty. Thirty and thirty-five. Thirty and gotcha. thirty-five. There you go. Second one was more robust. But first one's on there. there no, so there's a there's a mount you can get for my I have to get a specific mount for my flight stick because it's like very heavy niche stick uh oh. well no it's just that it's it's not like a super crazy expensive one it was like 120 bucks but uh it's it's got like a niche mounting pattern um because it's made by a very small chinese company uh incredible stick like best value you can get but um and i was like trying to find like mounting solutions and then i was like i should just buy their mount which is like a it comes off of your desk and then hangs down kind of below and forward from your desk hmm. for the longest time i was like i don't want to like have to put my hand down to the side like that that's such a weird thing and then i realized that no it's you put it between your legs like a real airplane <laughs> and where the stick is located and then it all clicked and i was like wait i should buy one of those oh man <laughs> oh you're truly falling down the hole time. Well, I was thinking for a long time that it was supposed to be down and off to the side like you were like operating a forklift or something, but mm -hmm. it is, in fact, no. In between forklift the airplane. I'm just an idiot. The, no, the forklift airplanes are great. Yeah. It's a great band, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Another party That's core band. I've, yeah, party I've officially committed that if Star Citizen ever actually comes out, then I will purchase a Veerpil Constellation, which is a very oh, expensive flight stick. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, you don't have to worry about ever doing that. Jif, <laughs> yeah. Jif, do you yeah. have access to the documento? Oh, the documento. Yeah. Let me... The documento. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, let me see send. if I can. Yeah, it's it's set to anyone send with the link. So there. Cool. Then I'll just delete it from the channel. I mean, there anybody in this anybody in this Discord Doesn't is matter. Yeah. fine to look at it. But anybody whatever. in the world is fine to look at it as long as they don't leave mean things everyone on it. i don't know who may twin is may twin but oh, everyone she's a, she's a good friend uh everyone who's... besides brock has been on the podcast and may twin but, yeah yeah i don't think may would want to she's very shy mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. she's in the chat all the time so mm -hmm. gotcha gotcha all right shall we get started yeah yeah, absolutely. We have been only, only, been started. only an hour late. <laughs> it's not an hour. Well, hey, it happens. It's not quite. Yeah, only so. 54 minutes late. <laughs> Horror. Horror. Hell yes. <laughs> Leave it yeah, there. That's uh -huh. all we need. <laughs> hey, that's. What are we talking about today? That was... Horror. Sick. Horror. Yeah. Hey, I, <laughs> we're talking about scary stuff. I took uh, I took a horror film class in community college. Best class I took in college. Oh yeah. All about. That sounds great. That was that was, that was the best. I took yeah, a uh, film class in college called uh, Cinema in Hitler's Germany. Jeez. Oh, that be interesting. Sounds, it was interesting. It's like bleak but interesting. And it started yeah. it started with films from the Weimar Republic, so we got to watch stuff like Metropolis and all that. It was great. Uh, uh, that, it was interesting. That's it was really a good interesting. Movie. Sorry, all Jeff, right. I interrupted all you. Right. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, because now I'm the, I'm like thinking I'm like okay. Obviously there was Lenny Riefenstahl, but who mm -hmm. else was there? So I'm just I'm just it's an intellectual sort of diversion. You're good. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <All right. laughs>
I was thinking about trying to do a Dracula accent for the for the intro, Jeez. but I can't. I can't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, just, I can't do it. I, I can't not be with that, that accent. Good. <laughs> what what is what is the quote? It's the uh, I don't have time. It's like saying I don't want to. I don't have yeah. time. Well, you know. All right. Give me give me like two minutes. Oh God. Okay. Karen just got home from uh, uh. visiting her friends, so she's getting her stuff to get ready for the night. She just got home. Night. Love you. Aww. Tell teach teach her to throw eggs at houses. <laughs> we'll, grand, we'll do that tomorrow in grand Halloween tradition. <laughs> and throw it at a fucking neighbor's apartment. God damn it, it's fuckers! Uh, <laughs> we are we are live on Twitch, by the way. So hey, do you are you my neighbors on Twitch? <laughs> hey, neighbors, shut the fuck up! Oh yes, I, this is the kind of energy that I'm here for. <laughs> Happy Halloween, everybody! Happy Halloween. That's a good one. Are you looking at flight sticks again? No. <laughs> oh, this I'm is a good one. Now I'm, mm, now yeah. I'm looking at Twitter. Wow, geez. That's <laughs> not I don't I don't know how you celebrate the tech that you are interested in, but Oof. Techtober, baby. Oh, oh look it's at a this good visual novel. screen. Yeah. Well, you joke, <laughs> but Oh, some people, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've seen the Nekoparo community. People, probably more people uh, indulge in visual novels in that context than flight sticks. Although I'm sure that there are plenty of people who it's true. have a similar affinity for flight sticks. You mm. can't install an H patch on a flight stick. <laughs> if you don't know what that means, don't look it up. <laughs> mm. I adjust my lighting. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Hello, and welcome to episode 197 of the Gaming Fix podcast on October 30th, 2021. I'm your host, Andre Cole, a.k.a. The Wet Gamer, a.k.a. your partner's favorite Halloween costume. I'm joined today by Pat. Um, My favorite Halloween... Oh, my favorite Halloween... Ah, it's... This is a funny thing to say, but like, it's not funny. I wish Erica were here. My favorite Halloween costume that I've ever had was I went as a character from the hit video game Riven, <laughs> the sequel to Mist. God, when I was like twelve. Okay, wow. That's yeah, rad. it was. It was cool. It was basically just like a cloak with like some bolas and mm. a rope around my waist. But okay, that's. Yeah, my mom and I made it. It was good. It was, it was a fun time. Shit. No one knew who I was. <laughs> Shocker. Also joining us, our our lovely producer, Alex. Uh, when I was like nine or something, I went as a sandwich. As, like it was okay. this big, giant foam thing, like just uh -huh. enormous, mm -hmm. with like a head sticking mm -hmm. out of it and little armholes, and then like it was just so big, it, it was hard to fit through doors. <laughs> Did you make this? Uh, my or mom and I also made this. Okay, 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 good, good. Allison. Um, so when I was a kid, my mom did make my costume, so there were some pretty good ones. But, like, the biggest, the best one um, was a uh, dress from Swan Princess, uh, or Swan Princess, oh. the movie, which I was very, which was, like, my favorite movie at the time, so it was very exciting for me. So I was, uh, so that's one of those where it's like, man, that was, a, that was good of my mom to work so hard on that. So thank you, mom. Nice. Thanks to the, Allison's mom. Were you the puffin? No, but I wish I was. And hence, in hindsight, now I was Odette Swan Princess. Oh, naturally. Yeah. But I wish I was puffin because that would have been sick. And here joining us to talk about all things horror, special guest jeff davis hello um as far as favorite halloween costume um i'm gonna have to go with the one that i had when i was like i think 10 years old my dad uh very magnanimously employed his uh theater craft to uh give me a full face of kabuki actor makeup oh, wow. and we 
Mm. And we basically just did this whole ensemble and literally none of my classroom, this is in small town, Michigan, and mm. this was before the internet. <sighs> And so folks didn't know uh, as, as much about Kabuki theater as they obviously are experts now. Uh, yes, uh -huh. everyone, <laughs> everyone does. loves Kabuki. The <laughs> first time I fell asleep in class was in Japanese class in high school, <laughs> watching a documentary about Kabuki. <laughs> I mean, I mean, nine year old me would be crushed, but 37 year old me understands. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, that was probably my favorite Hollywood costume. Okay. I also one year went as uh, Squall Leonhart, and it oh, was hell yeah. a real good costume. But um, everyone just asked me because I lived in uh, Florida at the time. And are you hot? This is when I was like 13. No, no, no. Everyone was just like, oh, are you a girl with a sword? <laughs> because the coat because his jacket has like fur on the top right yeah uh -huh. so i guess like early oh, 2000s Floridians yeah. was like well boys don't wear coats fur. with yeah. fur I don't care. like i was like yeah I, I think i started saying like yeah that's what i am at some point uh, uh -huh. but I just accepted uh, it <laughs> it's, it's not it's not worth it whatever he he really embraced the squall uh yes, personality exactly. Just, exactly. Whatever, did you do the, did you do, did you do the squall laugh mm, i don't think so i don't remember if i did or not i think there were some like t though <laughs> no i'm thinking of, i'm thinking of titus's laugh you're, sorry you're, yeah, yeah, say, yeah you, you are know, there's there's no audio in final or no, no like yeah. vocal I, track and i Fantasy. fucking hate titus titus whatever and i will never okay. seek to emulate <laughs> that buffoon ha, ha, ha. <laughs> oh god a walk, a walk at a lulu when titus washes I'm... up on the beach that's chapu <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, my uh, my probably fondest memory of a Halloween costume was the one time my mother made me a costume. Uh, she made me an Inuyasha costume for <laughs> like when I was twelve. Sick. Oh, I, would I had like the wig so and like yeah. I, I yeah. went to like a school like activity night thing that night. Yeah. Did, did anyone go up to you? I would have been like. Ah like... uh, no. <laughs> I did not find any crystal shards or anything, but you know. Well, you got work to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly, Halloween is not as much of a thing here in Japan as it is in the States. Like, they're aware of it, and like, they sell like Halloween decorations, but like, it's, it's not the same. There's no like, people don't really do Halloween parties. Yeah, except and for like, no, the like big, trick or treating like... or anything. Like, like, there's, like, a couple of big Halloween parties, right? Yeah, like, there's, there's like, like, Shibuya Halloween. Yeah. But, uh, the, the best Halloween in Japan is, um, I, I'm trying to remember what it's called, but, like, the mundane Halloween costumes where people oh, come yep, up with. Yep. Yeah, oh, that. Those are good. Those were amazing. Mm -hmm. oh, I think they're but, not doing it this year just because like, of COVID. It's, it, like, a big mixer yeah. they, kind of thing. And what, Wasn't that, like, we looked at that, like, two or three years ago where they had, like, those, the, the like, signs on them that said what they were. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that was yeah, so good. Yeah, and it's, like... Yeah. Like, looking for a lunch table and, like, stuff yeah. like that. Those were so Yeah, good. like... Yeah, those, those are always fun. Like, person waiting for this and doing this, it's, like, it's very good. Definitely. I hope at least some of those show up this year. Yeah, at least some pictures of those. Oh, yeah. man. I'm looking at some now. A person going to work on a windy day. It's just wearing a suit, but the tie is up on his face. Yep, yep. <laughs> I love this. Like when I you're loading this. and it's I think just... I'm looking at the same one. Yeah. An it's interviewer a, it... who's a little too extra with the pens. Yeah, I've, <laughs> I, I've sent a link to... Uh, yeah. To the, to the discord so everyone can take a look at it but i'll also add this to the show notes because it's too good to miss yeah no i always look them up every year because those are always very fun i hope some person who soon. wiped their hands on their clothes after washing their hands <laughs> <laughs> so good. there was when you're yeah, there was there very was creative there was a bit so our um our uh delightful mayor in Seattle, who's actually pretty awful. Um, 
there was a, she, <laughs> she she had a she had a bunch of text message conversations with the chief of police from last summer that should be in the public record that she deleted and <laughs> Uh, yeah, because she's really? awful. She's resigning, so whatever. Uh, or not resigning, but not seeking re-election. Um, some I saw a Halloween costume that was a couple's costume where someone went as her and her deleted text messages, <laughs> 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 and the person that was playing the text messages just had like text message conversations taped all over his body. That's really <laughs> it was, good. It was very, it was very good. Extremely wow. local to Seattle, but you know, it's good. Mm-hmm. Hey, you know, sometimes that's all you got to do. The topical people around you get it. It's for you. It's for them. It's not for anybody else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, all really what brings us here today is not Halloween costumes. So I, I really enjoyed hearing every uh, hearing about all y'all's experiences with Halloween. Costumes. You asked. Was, yeah, I, I know. Yeah. And I'm really glad that <laughs> I, think, I think that was very enlightening. We learned a lot about each other. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we learned that Pat is a fucking nerd. That's true. <laughs> oh, so yeah, that's the person this is who the dressed up as Inu Yasha. Come on. Uh, hey. Yeah. That's, hey. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have no defense, but uh, really, what brings us here today is uh, the th- same thing that brings us here every week. It's video games, right? Yeah, it's, we all, right. We all play some video games, right? Right. Uh, <laughs> usually, it's, it's video games, right? <laughs> it's like the the Star Wars meme. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, right. I don't know why I have to do visual right. impressions of that. Uh, you know, works really uh, great for a just, podcast. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, okay. absolutely. I mean, we could almost do it here. Now we've got five people. If it was just the four of us, we could all like in our in, in our windows, yeah. like yeah, make it happen. But uh, we can't. So uh, instead, we're gonna hear about Allison's cereal she's been enjoying, what? Cap and Crunch. Oops, Ooh. all atelier. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't wow. need to do a big update, uh, but I've started the um, next series in that, uh, which is the uh, Dusk series, which is really, I think, an interesting series to play at this time because it's very specifically set at this time, like with uh, it, it's a lot more serious in tone, but while also having a lot of the like humor and charm of the earlier series so it's like you have these characters and they're all very lovable and you're um enjoying it but you're also in this world that's basically like yeah every we're we're basically at the end of the world let's be honest because like crops are dying it's like increasingly difficult to survive and it's uh a lot um there's there's like a whole you know lore lore reasons for all of this that uh i one of them is is uh, back uh, from the true ending of the game, the first game in the series, Aisha. And so I was like, "Ooh, do I go and replay that?" But I, I might do that later. But it's yeah, it's it's really it's been f- interesting to play this because I feel like this is the like smallest of the series. Like this is the le- the least um, well known series or sub-series of the more recent ones, just because, uh, like, the first one, Arland, is, is like, wildly beloved, and they added a new game to it, um, Mysterious, they added an- they're added they adding another new game to it with uh, Sophie 2, and then everybody likes Ryza, <laughs> um, but... Oh, man. It- Does everybody loves Ryza star Ray Romano? Yeah, oh, my God. As Ryza. Like, 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 let's, uh, let's, uh, mod <laughs> Tell you Ryza. To have Ray Romano. Rise of, yeah, Rise as, of Rise of, <laughs> as long as, long oh as fucking Brad Garrett isn't there, I'm fine with it. <laughs> Anyways. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I have to say much more about this this because uh I've been talking about these games a lot, but it's been gen- it's just been really fun to play this series. I'm not really sick of it yet. I although I am going to to stop so I can play some inscription <laughs> this weekend and actually play yeah. the games that came out in the past year uh, before we get to game of the year later this year. But yeah, no, I, I just, this has been a really fun time to play it and it feels very uh, fitting to play because the, the 
the town I'm in and the, the game I'm playing has all like pumpkin-y and has a lot of very autumn -y, so it has a very good fitting vibe but yeah it's just interesting how it's like this is like kind of the dark series but it has the it, it still has a lot of like the characters and the joy of it but also like knowing hey this is you know kind of like end times there's like a whole like people like the the, the sub series aren't connected but there people have done a whole like fan uh timelines and stuff and this is like always kind of like either at the end or uh like a turning point in in those fan all of the games are connected timelines and they look bananas like it's very weird but it's yeah it's just been fun to kind of uh look into that all right so is are they sorry i i spaced out a little bit are they similar like series to series gameplay wise are they the same or are yeah, they basically. vastly different or like so they're each game has like some tweaks which is which is interesting like all like they all the systems have their own little tweaks in every game from what i can tell so it doesn't feel like too exhausting but it does have kind of the same gameplay loop mm. uh where you go out collect stuff you uh use alchemy to make stuff and then you use that uh to fight things and when you collect stuff and go do um various tasks like the first game in the dusk series uh you have you you have a specific goal to save your sister um who has been uh spirited away by mysterious circumstances and again i still don't know 100 percent how that happened because I, I didn't get the true ending so i am very like Ooh. um so so that and then, then the second one uh which I find very relatable. You are playing as uh, employees of your local government and doing like missions to uh, basically like help your area, your town out. And uh, I haven't hit, like hit much of an overarching plot yet, but uh, yeah, but it's, it's still kind of the same kind of tenor of you go out, you get stuff and you're able to use alchemy to make new usable items and weapons and everything like that so it's the the gameplay is it's it's like different but it's the the kind of if you've played one you kind of know the general gameplay loop that you're going to get into the next game okay what what system were these on ps3 ps4 yeah these were ps3 um okay yeah uh the, all of the modern ones that i've been playing who started on ps3 uh and have been going on up till ps4 uh okay so yeah probably the, a P only ps5 the... series coming any any oh month my now God, please uh next well next year is the 25th anniversary and they've just announced um uh Sophie 2, which is the first game, like the a sequel to the first game in the Mysterious series. And I'm like, oh, are you going to announce like a new series for the 25th or a new kind of. They're going to they're going to do what Persona like is doing for their anniversary and they're going to do like an entire year of announcements and be like, here's some wallpapers for your phone. Yay. Oh, yeah. Or, or do like basically like the the Danganronpa anniversary where it's like jack shit. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like we're going to do all these announcements and you're just like, what? Where? It's going to be on mobile now. OK, uh, yeah, no, they, they, they they've said like here, there's going to be at least five more announcements. And I'm like, I don't know what that means, but just uh, just do it all at once. Yeah, they're like, if you go onto out. the website, they're like, look, here's the space for all the announcements that'll happen. And I'm like, just announce them. Um, we made an interactive app for the PlayStation 5. Yeah, but at least, uh, at least the, apparently the, the sales for Ryza and Ryza 2 have been really good. So I'm like, oh, thank goodness that I'm getting into the series when it's like, popular well, yeah when it's like when people it's gonna actually continue the, the, the future is assured almost. exactly exactly it's not like i'm gonna get into the series and it's like oh no nobody bought it if like if i had gotten into it 
a little bit earlier, like maybe, but those were really popular. So I'm like, mm. oh, thank goodness they're going to keep making these games um, because those are popular. So it's yeah, but it's it's been it's been fun. And I, I think if you like the idea of especially kind of niche JRPGs, um, uh, especially if you like the crafting, because that is really the the core of the game, because it's it's each character you're playing as an alchemist. Um, so if if you if that sounds interesting and, and diving deep into that, then I, I totally recommend the series. Like there are definitely times where I'm playing the game and I'm like, I'm just gonna go on a giant alchemy binge and just do nothing but craft a bunch of items because you can do some interesting stuff there. For fans of New World, play Atelier. Yeah, they're good games. I don't know. Uh, like I don't know guessing. if a new if you're New World <laughs> If you want to, if you want to play New World, but you also want more anime in your life, <laughs> sure. And if you, I want think that's function. called Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy fourteen is. That. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah, that's never mind. You're that. You're right. But yeah, yeah. I, I, I am also probably going to try to pick up. Oh man, I'm I'm thinking of picking up the other game um, by the same. Uh, developer uh uh gust their their new game uh they, they have a they have a game called blue refl the blue reflection why can't i say that today yeah, easy um, for you to say. and they're um blue ref blue reflection <laughs> oh my god what the fuck is wrong with me um the, the sequel words, is coming out hard. soon and apparently it's uh it's not selling very well but uh. um that's uh, so that's specifically a game where you can play say it. it. Yeah. <laughs> Blue that... reflection. I did it. Blue um, hell yes. reflection. Yeah, but it's Blue it's it's uh, it's apparently uh, it kind of like what if that, but also vaguely kind of persona e because you play like you have like your oh, day to day school stuff. It. Yeah, yeah. No, oh. I, the, not okay, any, the not anymore. Series, the oh, the music. We'll oh no. We'll the music in the Italian series is like universally <laughs> <Will we? laughs> really, really good. Um, but this one is like specifically you play as like, uh, like magical girls where like day to day you go to school and, yeah. and, I, and then you um, go uh, fight monsters and stuff. So do you, have to, do you have to sign any contracts? Oh God! Oh no! <laughs> I assume, have to, uh... I assume Allison's the only one in the room who will get that one. <laughs> oh no. Uh, everyone should dude, watch Mad like... everyone should watch Madoka Magica. It's great. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. That, that's Based on the memes something... I've seen, I think I shouldn't watch it. Something wow. something entropy? I don't know. Fucking uh, some of these DLC costumes, like <laughs> Yeah. See that's the thing. Well well the thing about the the series that's is Italian. like I feel like See, the thing about the series, though, I feel like in the games themselves, they don't really do fan service, but they just mm. sell, like, really fan service-y costumes, and they're just like, here you go, and you're like, on the one hand, I appreciate that you can, you only need to see that if you want to, you, can, you only need to interact with, like, the fan service-y elements if you're just like, hey, give us extra money, and you can have the characters be in a bikini if you want, but, like, now it's like... Oh, I don't know if I love that. I'm gonna show you what I'm seeing here. It's like it's just. Oh, this what is for blue. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Let's see. Oh yeah. Blue oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's just. <laughs> yeah. That's just blue yeah, reflection, more like lewd reflection. I don't know. Yeah. Got him. Yeah, but that's the yep. thing. Like it doesn't. Like that's only like in the costumes. In, in I don't DLC. know. But yeah. It's weird. Yeah, it's weird. It's one of those things where I'm like, <sighs> as I've been watching a lot more anime recently, I kind of, um, there's a lot of stuff where I'm like, I, I don't like the, some of the nonsense, but I kind of just need to accept if, if accept I, that it exists if I can hey, keep watching I'm anime. about to talk about a video game that is primarily about... <laughs> warfare in medieval europe we all accept certain problematic elements of the things we enjoy <laughs> there's yeah. there is no non-problematic media it doesn't exist i was i was at uh, round one today uh like you do uh doing some ufo catcher stuff 
And there was this guy there who was going to like the, you know, the sexy lady statues or whatever. Like, oh, here's like a bunny girl. Here's uh-huh. some other like a sexy maid kind of statue. And then I realized his mom was also there with him. This guy was like in his 20s. And then he was also there with his mom. Like, and she was like standing with him as he was doing this. And I'm like, this Please. is weird. This is uncomfortable. Like- Hmm. more power to you oh yeah. there's uh I, I, as somebody that's been into like figures lately some really good bunny girl figures like it's it's i hate it but I, there's like some the some of the uh companies that make them i'm like the artistry is really good and it's like they they make these beautiful figures and i'm like but i don't want that <laughs> it's, it's like, yeah. like that's the thing. Yeah. Well, and, and then like yeah. those are like barely the, that that barely scratches the surface of like the really horny figures where you can spend oh, yeah. like no, yeah. a bit amounts of money for like mm-hmm. characters for where some... their boobs are all hanging out, and you're like, yep, yep. And you're like, the artistry is really good. Like it's like they whoever sculpted this so... like did it with such beautiful artistry. I, I, could, I could be sold on a really good Daikon four opening animation okay that would figure, be you know? fucking like, sweet there's there's context oh my God. Where, like, do i need a like a playboy bunny anime lady no however if it's specifically referencing that video which is okay that would be fucking sweet and that, i love oh. it then and they oh. do like sexy oh. characters with like with like completely inappropriate like sexy statues with completely inappropriate characters, like you know, oh, Evangelion really characters. If, like, you like these are these are about... teenagers. Like, what are we Bro, doing? Oh, yeah. If you want, yeah. I'm not going to send a link to this because it makes me uncomfortable. But if you want to go down the weird horny rabbit hole, look up I Daki don't. Makura covers. Like, look up I, your I your, your, your body that. pillow covers because oh, I don't know if this is official. But Allison and Pat, I guess you will also get this. There, there's a place that recently put out a sexy uh, Daki Makura cover with Rika, uh, Rika and Satoko from Higurashi. Uh, and I'm no, like, no, those no, are no, like 11, it. those are like 11 year old kids. <laughs> There's that so gross. What I'm, not, you, like, what I'm not gonna send you a link because it's fucking awful. No, no, but I don't no. want to do that. But, but what I'll say is this is a, that's, this makes it, I mean, it's very difficult in the same way that, um, you know, liking things like medieval history. That's just a thing I don't talk about publicly because there are such disgusting elements of that community that I just enjoy it privately because I think I'm not interested in the really shitty stuff. But, you know, and so to some extent, like with anime, it's it's like, man, I don't know if not that I'm judging anybody who's into anime and not a weirdo, but like a problematic weirdo about it. but. I don't think even if I got way into anime, I think I'd probably just keep it to myself because there's so oh, many yeah. fucked up, like deeply mm-hmm. disturbing uh oh, contingents yeah, no. within that, like, that community that just uh, as somebody is, that is is surrounded by anime figures right now, I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I did I did a good thing related to anime figures today. Uh, while I was at this round one, I was running out of time, and this machine was just not giving me this Luffy figure that I wanted. And I was mm-hmm. like, please, for the love of God! But I was running out of time. I was like, oh, I got to get back for my Japanese lesson. I had five hundred yen left, and this kid had walked behind me. He was like, Oh, I definitely want that. And then he was waiting. I was like, You know what? I, I give up. Here's five hundred yen, kid. Good luck. And then I just left. I didn't. He's just like, Aww, oh, that's cute. what? What? And nice. I just walked away. And I hope, I hope he got it because that so thing was too. not moving. <laughs> that, that, oh okay. yeah, Some the, of those... the employees are nice, or, and they'll be like, okay, we'll we'll position it for you. But or you just started a crippling gambling addiction in this child. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep, 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 yep. Hey, you know what? Tracks. Uh, it's like you see that kid I, I in like here to ten teach, years, so. and he's like, he's like, "What the fuck did you do to me?" Yeah, you know what? Or it's he'll gonna... be the next Elon Musk, and then he'll be like, "Here's a billion dollars." God, it's, it's this podcast is awful. It's if you're gonna turn into uh, oh god, what's the cat's name from Odd Taxi? That what what gets addicted to gotchas? Oh. Uh, him, Tanaka. Yeah, Tonica. You're gonna turn this kid into Tonica. Oh my so, god! Um, that I, I, that kid. Tanaka. 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 We, we have to Tanaka. stop talking about anime. Do we? <laughs> yes, we do. Oh. Uh, oh, I, this is like, there's something. Well, there's a lot you of know, good anime out there right now, so it is. 
it's it's, it's, it's a, a sort of a sort of like spring for anime. The new animes are blooming all over. Oh, I see. Wow. I don't have to talk about it much, but I definitely the new games. Bloom. Really, it's it's the the blooming season for games. Games are popping up all over, and the Nintendo put out one with Niantic. Yeah, again, so I don't I, 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 I've only had it for like a, a, a day, so it's really, I don't have to talk about it very much, but basically uh, they put out a new game with Niantic uh, called Pikmin Bloom. I, I was interested to check that out because I've been doing a lot of walking lately, and uh, I, I've been playing a little bit of Pokemon Go too, but hot take, that's not a great walking game because like when you're actually like looking to catch Pokemon, you're just like, you kind of have to go to a stop. Whereas like Pikmin Bloom is very much more of like, you're just going to go for a walk and then come back and the steps that you've done can get you more Pikmin and stuff. So it's, it's much more of like a game that's like, hey, you're going to connect with your pedometer or the um, steps for your on your phone and it, it'll make Pikmin Bloom for you. So I oh. yeah, we'll see where that so we'll see where that goes, but yeah, I, I think that it's a little bit better of it's more geared towards you're going to go for a walk and then you come back and you see, okay, here's all the, you know, here's the benefits that it got me in the app. So, which so is kind of it, nice. It's, it's almost like a soul silver heart gold poke walker kind of scenario. It's almost. <laughs> Rad. Not quite, but almost. Oh man, I, I, so I, was, I was just stick thinking your about phone that. Onto like a, a washer or a dryer. Yeah, <laughs> stick it onto a dryer and just let I, it shake it. I was it. just thinking about that where I'm like, man, just need to do a Pokemon pedometer. I would be so excited. Although, I do have the Digimon uh, pedometer watch that I have pre ordered. Yeah. Uh, which is the same yeah, thing you where do. it's basically you raise a, a Digimon with your walkings. Oh, sure. I'm excited not? for that. Yeah. Did, did did this unrelated? Did you read like this was years ago? Like I think it was Iowa State or something said that the Poke Walker was actually one of the most accurate um, pedometers out on the oh, market yeah, at the time. Oh yeah, I saw that. Which yeah, was hilarious. It was like legitimately a really good pedometer. <laughs> yeah, like it was. It was considered like one of the best at the time that you could get, even compared to like retail pedometers. It was Nintendo. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, who knows what Nintendo is doing, really? Nintendo just does whatever they want. Yeah, you know, the, yeah, and that's like part of the reason you love Nintendo and part of the reason you hate Nintendo. They they, they can make a good ass pedometer. They can't emulate their own games well, though. <laughs> oh no! no. <laughs> we'll also get there. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, uh, I'll, I'll I'll let you guys know how that how that works out. And... How many Pikmin you got? Uh, I only have three right now, okay. but you, but colors. it does take a little bit of time too. They're all red. Um, okay. But I because I, I linked my Nintendo account. Uh, I have a uh, like they specifically have. Um, I, I got a gift Pikmin that's growing from Nintendo, uh, and it's gonna take ten thousand steps to get to it. And I'm like, what are what are you going to be? So okay. that's be that's a cool way. To- See, that's an that's a cool way to encourage it, in my opinion. Like much more so than like the typical free to play bullshit of like, oh, you can either grind it out or pay us five bucks. This is like, you can do ten thousand steps to find out, and that's the only way to do it. So go exercise. Yeah, and and that's what that's it cool. seems like. It's like it's a daily it's a daily thing where it's like, here's how many steps you walked yesterday, and you level up by uh growing pikmin and how do you grow pikmin yeah. you get steps in so it's That's very cool. much more of like a kind of exercise type we're going to encourage people to go walking uh and also with the, with pikmin than actually trying to be its own kind of game which That's i think interesting. is interesting which is actually kind of what i wanted because i again like pokemon go is is kind of hard if you're trying to go for an actual walk rather than play pokemon go so yeah, like the Pokemon Go kind of dictates when you stop. <laughs> like, right. it's like, oh, you're stopping now to play the game. Um, is right. any, is any part of Pikmin Bloom monetized? Like, I I just don't see where uh, they would. Um, from what you described. Let's see. Uh, you can buy stuff. You can buy like, like hats or something. Yeah, you can buy like extra slots to grow Pikmin. Oh. Grow more Pikmin. Can you grow, oh, okay. like, upgrade your storage. You can buy coins to get, like, 
special petals and stuff. I don't know. It does. I, I don't see why you would want to do that, though. Yeah. Um. It, 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 especially since it's not as like like with Pokemon Go. I, I don't know if anybody's just like, like like Pikmin is a beloved game, but I don't know if anybody's like I, I collect all the Pikmin. They're not ride or die Pikmin fans. <laughs> or just like you know Pikmin. You're not like. I don't know. It's not like, oh, I need to be able to catch that Halloween Pikachu, which they have Halloween themed Pokemon in Pokemon Go right now. And it's very good. Uh, they have a Pikachu they, with a they, little Halloween hat. And, I think uh, they exist, but I, probably less common. Yeah. Uh, so, I, I, I mean, it's definitely monetizable. I just haven't seen any sort of like reason why I would want to put money into it. Which, that's fine, in my opinion. Yeah. All right. Well, that's Pikmin Bloom. Also blooming is Pat's love for medieval warfare. Mm, I don't know if that's I mean, blooming. It's it was there. I think, I think it's, it's, just, it's, it's established. It's kind of it's, been there for the last. I, well, no. I mean, well, yeah, years. it was there, and it, it, you know, it, it, it's blooming again. It's, it's coming back. It's. So you're saying know, it's, getting to. It's. It's. it's you're just saying it's reaching like reaching for the sun, going. Oh it's, yeah, it's not it's, like sprouting. It's blooming. It's like an. It's an annual crop, and it's just come back from the dead. Yeah. And now it's back. It's again. not even yeah. annual because I played chival chivalry a bunch like yeah, three months ago. It's. It's you know <laughs> seasonal. I don't know. Pat, we can't help how many times you bloom. <laughs> it's kind of just perpetual, really. Uh, Springtime for Pat every every three months. Blooming all over 12th century Europe. Uh, uh, no, I am uh, tulips. Have, oh, okay, we're we're on to NFTs now and tulips and oh, uh, God. yeah. Okay. Oh, God. Wait, 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 wait. Man. Sorry, back that up. Tulips. What does that have to do with NFTs? Is it tulip something economy? What is that? Yeah, like tulip the historical bubble? tuna. Oh, uh, that yeah, tulip tulips yeah. were like the NFTs of I don't know the, the oh. long time ago. Oh, Very I thought you, I thought I thought, I thought okay, I see what you're saying. Uh, I thought you were saying yeah. that there's a current modern trend that with some no, NFT thing no, that's called no, they're no, calling no, no, tulips, no, no, no. and I'm like, oh, no, please don't. No, <laughs> no. I just had I just had a horrifying thought. Oh, I'm sorry to to, to do no, the please. aside. No, no, no. I had a horrifying thought. Here in Michigan, we have a thing that we do because uh, on the west side of the state we have a large amount of uh, Dutch immigration that very quickly dug in and just sort of like spread out and one of the things we have is tulip time tulip time is serious business like people from miles away come in just to see the tulips and the wooden shoes and the dancers mm -hmm. and the whole theatrical <laughs> production and so what i'm imagining now is like tulip time nfts as funded <laughs> by the city government and I'm terrifyingly like, oh this is also um, a phenomenon in the skagit valley in washington so it's in multiple places, so we could uh, definitely, it could definitely be uh, a national thing. And you can't uh, escape it, Pat. And <laughs> now, now all I can see is Tulip Time as hosted by Tim Allen, but not Crazy oh, Tim oh. Allen. But... <laughs> I mean, or Crazy exactly. Tim Allen. <laughs> that, that's better than what I was going to say, which was just perfect Tulip Time. <laughs> Three houses, Sorry. baby. <laughs> Anyways, anyway, patent Age tulips. of Empires. There's no yeah. tulips that I've seen yet in Age of Empires four. Well, you'll, so you'll get to the you'll get to the tulip wars. We'll see. I did just start the French campaign last night, so uh, oh, it's oh, the oh. Hundred Years War, though. So I don't know how much tulip tuliping we'll be getting to. Um, or Netherlands. <laughs> no. So uh, the I have a, a a long history with Age of Empires. I played every Age of Empires game. Um, when I was uh, younger, and um, there are um, plenty of specific problems with Age of Empires 3, but I think that the, um, and all of them, but Age of Empires 3 specifically deals with colonization and, and colonization of the Americas and, like, the Revolutionary War and stuff, and the, there's a lot of, uh, what, what obviously, you, issues there. What did you think of Age of Empires Online? Because I feel like that's one that people don't talk much about. Uh, I played it for like an hour and it was not what i wanted so i kind of okay. just moved on um and i hadn't really thought about it for a long time until i started doing those definitive editions um right. the age one through three definitive editions are uh extraordinarily good they're like 
what remasters they're like the perfect examples of remasters they did things like tweak and update the, i haven't played three but i would assume they do this with that too they tweaked and updated the history a little bit with um with with one and two and like dialed in some of the things the, the the historical information that we have that is different now than what it was in the 90s they've fixed and updated which is awesome That's and cool. then also they made sure that it works well and the and visually they're just stunning the the coolest thing one of the coolest things to me about the age of empire series is each game in the series is absolutely worth playing right now um the campaigns are all still really really good and i played a bunch of age one in the lead up to this and like the campaigns are still very fun in that and because they um with the exception of the newest one one through three all kind of target different periods in time first one's more the ancient world the second one's more me the medieval world um and then the third one is more like you know the 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 age of the british empire and, and colonialization um uh age four is unique because or not unique really because it's very much knocking on the age of empires two um time period and um looking to portray uh the sort of similar kinds of conflicts as to what is was portrayed in age of empires 2 which makes sense because age of empires 2 is the best game in the series uh so it's it's it makes sense that they would they would do that and um h4 is actually made by relic entertainment um not obviously ensemble which doesn't exist anymore to my knowledge yeah. um but uh relic exists largely because of age of empires i mean they were they, they, they're at their studio yeah. that basically like, was built to company build heroes. modern rts's yeah. yep dawn of war series dawn company of, of heroes yeah. um those are sort of modern or at the time modern answers to uh the age of empire series in a lot of ways and other rts's but i i still think of starcraft is so different from what age of empires was doing that i kind of think of it as its own sort of thing where age of empires and rise of nations and all of those games were kind of more in this vein uh but what's cool about age age four <laughs> for me anyway is relic did not try to reinvent the wheel or or do some kind of hybridization of company of heroes and age of empires instead they made a in my opinion very pretty some people have said that they don't think it looks good but i think it looks great uh version of age of empires 2 that leans harder into the asymmetry uh between the factions so um it is much more um the factions in Age of Empires 2 certainly have their own like special units and stuff, but it's not like StarCraft where each faction is wholly different from the other ones. Age 4 is much closer to that. It's still, there's still similarities between like England and France that they, they play very similarly. Um, but when you compare like the Mongols to France, they are very, very different. So like Which country Mongols, is the Protoss? Actually, it is the Mongols because they don't even build houses. From what I understand, I haven't played them. This is what I've heard. They don't build houses and they can pick their base up and move it whenever they want to. Um, so there's a lot of, uh, of, of differences between the different factions, uh, which is very cool. I haven't really done, dug into the multiplayer yet. The thing I've been playing through is the campaigns before I go into that. And I've played through, there's four campaigns. There's a English campaign, a French campaign, um a mongol campaign and a uh russian campaign uh mm -hmm. and uh i finished the the english one which is about the uh the the, the rise of the norman empire basically or the, the 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 norman conquest of england and sort of the cool stuff that i didn't know that much about like age two really focuses on william the conqueror specifically but what age four does that is awesome to me is it structures the campaigns like playable documentaries so instead of a like age two had like william the conqueror doing a character person doing voiceover for this this character in age four they don't really give voice to the characters from history outside of the normal chattering and old english that the 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 english units do instead they have this great narrator who walks you through like starts off and she explains the historical context behind like the battle of hastings and then you play it 
and then she talks about um the the kind of uh I think I can't remember if there's more that you play as William, but then you go into Henry the First's reign and talk about um, his his defense of the crown and like the sacking of York and all that stuff. And you play through that. You talk about um, M- Matilda's uh, contention for the crown. You play some scenarios in that space, and and you're getting in between all the levels. You're getting these really lavish descriptions of like this is what was happening this is the historical context for these battles the one thing that they fail to do which i f- i was not expecting this is they don't really also explain that the enormity of the suffering of people during this period which was uh is staggering to think about how horrific conditions were for the working class in the middle ages um and they kind of gloss over that at one point they talk about how like <laughs> Henry rode out into the countryside and killed a hundred thousand people just to make people stop questioning his rule, which was That's pretty a fucked. normal thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> they at least yeah. acknowledge mm-hmm. that that occurred, but they don't talk about how every single time you play one of these missions, as your workers are happily chopping away at trees in real life, it was like it was the, uh, atrocious the things that were occurring. But you know what? That's kind of it's 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 a that's a huge subject that it would be great if we were all more aware of it but uh i wasn't expecting this game necessarily to do a deep dive on the working conditions of people in this time period um but anyway the uh the other awesome thing about the the campaigns is you'll play one of these missions and you'll get the historical context on both ends of it and how it leads into the next one but then you'll also get like a bonus video that'll be about like mail and it'll be about how they made mail and they'll it'll be like a five minute it's, we do it the same way today <laughs> uh, well, i guess we, now we it's all typed on a computer but you know it'll be a, it'll be a they'll be talking to like historians who are sitting there making chain mail and they're talking to the process and they have these like really lush videos um that remind me of like good history channel documentaries kind of um and they'll be there's one about trebuchets there's one about uh the the there's a there's a group of historians that i've seen read and seen many a thing about them because they've been doing it for 25 years but in france that are building a medieval castle using medieval techniques um and they talk about them they visit the castle and go over that stuff the one that i unlocked last night near the end of the norman campaign was about how they made paint in england in in medieval england and it was fascinating i had no idea like the way that they they heat ochre to different temperatures and that's and for different lengths of time and that creates different pigments um and it, that stuff is just fascinating and it's so fun you you're like man i really want to beat this mission so that i can learn about fucking medieval paint i really want i, I want to learn about falconry and hawking so i'm gonna <laughs> make sure i beat this level this tonight sounds, oh, this hawking. sounds like a, like a rare thing a a very rare thing a good edutainment game. yes <laughs> it is it is borderline the campaigns are borderline agitainment and they're f- fantastic because huh. like the core game is super solid it's really 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 good it feels good to play it it's it moves at a pace that i really like it's much slower than something like a starcraft but it it's not um languid either for any by any means um i'm playing it on the intermediate difficulty and there's one scenario i hated out of the campaign that was extremely difficult for me um it took me like probably 15 tries to beat it so it's not as if it's boring by any means with its pacing but it's it's a lot less um stressful to me than something like a starcraft uh and and the at least against the ai the the balance of it feels good uh i just i think probably in the multiplayer it's a little more they've got a little more work to do but they're kind of holding the ranked mode i think until they've gotten a bit more testing done with a wider audience interesting all right though i was holding back on a joke because you were being earnest um talking (laughs) about history channel documentaries and all it comes to mind is what current history channel is yeah you got it, Jeff. I was thinking like, oh, ancient aliens and <laughs> pawn stars. Like that's that's what's on fucking History Channel these days. So, oh, but then thanks. I started thinking Age of Empires, but pawn stars. Wow. Uh, I want to I want to sell these trebuchets. <laughs> I'll give you five bucks for it. Give you three fifty. Yeah. Uh, one. Uh, I was listening to the to the Waypoint Radio discussion of this game, and Rob Zachney on the show talked about like 
the the tradition of and i didn't think anybody else actually did this the tradition of the post thanksgiving like the the friday after thanksgiving when you're all sitting around just watching history channel for 16 hours <laughs> which yes. my dad and i did holy crap yes. that's accurate. year in and year out <laughs> uh and uh and it was it was and and this game absolutely has some shades of that feeling and they do stuff like the the in the it's very cool too it doesn't come off as corny to me anyway it'll be like they'll talk about uh lincoln castle one of the missions is is the siege of lincoln castle uh and they they're just showing the town of link drone footage of the town of lincoln today and the way that there's you know the city is all around the castle that's still standing and then they'll kind of like zoom in on the walls of the castle and you can see all of the modern buildings in the background and they'll line the walls with wireframe like kind of uh ghost images of the units from age of empires um kind of all over the walls and talk about like what was happening and stuff and it's so it's 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 they do this like kind of almost ar kind of thing that there are our history channel documentaries that have specifically done that in the past but because this is also a very high production value video first party microsoft video game the quality level is like through yeah. the roof compared do to you, a lot of that stuff I've seen do, on TV. You, do you feel like it is the kind of thing that could be used in a high school classroom in a, to an extent if i were a high school history teacher i would be we would be see at, we would be inquiring about volume discounts for game pass so that i could teach this stuff for a month yeah. uh that's, it. that's really using the game yeah. um it, it is it is i mean the levels themselves of course have to incorporate age of empires gameplay so they're not necessarily like the scale Historically isn't accurate. quite the same you know yeah. you're dealing with like a couple hundred units per side instead of thousands but yeah. um they get close enough and the, the 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 storytelling parts the the documentary parts are definitely accurate enough that i would want to teach them for sure that's awesome nice yeah uh well pat's Ours age more. of blooming will continue yeah, I'm hoping to play through the whole Hundred Years War campaign, which they do a great job of like that you play through the English and then the next campaign they're immediately like, and now the English are the fucking bad guys. <laughs> and <laughs> just like say, what assholes tell me like for the, that verbatim. For the rest yeah, of I history. Wish. Yeah. Uh, they already well, France, were the bad guys. Yeah. France France had plenty of bad guy France had plenty of bra moments mm -hmm. during the seventeenth and eighteenth centuries. Bruh. Uh, but uh, I also Rub Spear Bra. Like, I didn't even oh, yeah. know that there was uh the that that to decide whether the English or the French ruled over Brittany they just agreed to sending 30 dudes per side into an arena and whichever side won was like an I quit match. The other side was going to leave Brittany. No. I had no idea that that actually, that's the first campaign mission in, in the hundred years where I didn't oh. know that oh. at all. It's so Same. wild yeah, that that happened. Super wild. Um, super wild. Yeah. And they like have documentary footage of the place where the, the combat happened. There's a big obelisk there now. Uh, it's in the middle of a like, tree like a like a, a a glen uh it's it's wild uh, anyway huh. yeah it's cool stuff Sacre bro <laughs> oh my god <laughs> that sounded <laughs> that sounded like a yakuza character trying to do a french accent hey, you know, you know in a, in as, yeah. french school play <laughs> as a as a french person i can say that's exactly what we would say Sacre yeah, bro. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm writing that down. The best part, it, the best part right Thank now you. for the, the hundred the hundred years war campaign is that the woman that uh does the narration um does she's she's uh she has a British accent, but she does incredible French pronunciations. Hmm. Not like incredible because they're wrong or funny, incredible because they're ex extremely good. good. And yeah. so you get to cool. hear her pronounce all these French names and it's it's awesome. <laughs> French names are sick. <laughs> Nice. Did, did you know that my name is extremely French? Oh yeah. Like if you, the, the full name, it's mm -hmm. my middle name you is Jean J E A N. So people used to think I was a lady, and also because my uh. name ends with D R E, I would also get assumed to be an Alexandra. So like they'd yeah, be like, oh, oh hello, hello, ma'am. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's a nice. Thing. Nice. Uh -huh. You should put your should put your Squally and Hart costume on. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what I do Whatever. on this podcast. It's fair. Sadly. Fair enough. Uh, well, uh, as Pat blooms, uh, can can love bloom on a battlefield oh in the God. Hundred Years' War? Uh, can, can Pikmin bloom on a battlefield? If you're asking me, if, <laughs> if you were asking me, if people were fucking during that fucking? period on, on battlefield, absolutely nice. that occurred. Mm -hmm. I am sure that there was plenty of carnal activity happening at the end of the day when the the battle lines had been uh -huh. deserted for well, you know. Uh, okay, that's maybe I, one I of my it. favorite jokes that you've made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I will be so mad if that's not the Fuck. title of this episode. Yeah. Yeah. We have some we have some good ones in contention, unfortunately. Yep. We'll yep. see. Yep. This. I, I said what I said. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, <laughs> Noted. Well, Alex, it's hey. it's your turn to bloom as as one of your journeys at, do you want to talk about your journey that ended or your journey that is starting? Well, let's start let's do the one that ended, because Pat and I have both both yeah. seen this journey to completion. Um, I also did do this. Uh, this I just started. Well. Sorry, Wait, Alex and I finished inscription. Yeah, we we have finished that thing. I don't even know how hey, to really we, put it together. Do you remember how last week I was like, I don't know about this game. It's really cool yeah. with the RNG and the the balance sucks, and I don't know. It's, it's true fucking rad that game is like probably my favorite game of the year uh it's really it's, interesting it's so good so uh, the, pat we both played pony island right yeah yeah has anyone else here played pony island and i would no? say too no? like if you okay. if you're if you're trying to go into you should just play inscription and we don't have yeah. to talk about it for very long because i don't want to spoil anything for people no. it's, it's just really good i, I would really like cool. to i'd prefer keeping it very high level without even talking about what happens what no, happens. I don't. Yeah, I don't. Um, I don't think. Yeah, the the RNG, it is a factor. Um, don't get too frustrated with it. Once you it gets break mitigated. past, once you get break past a certain barrier, it's not a it's not an issue anymore. Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, won't say how. Won't say why. It, it just don't worry yeah. about it. It it gets better. Um, I think I really like Pony Island a lot. Like I played that probably shortly after it came out. Uh, just played it all in one sitting and it was just had my mind blown because it's just so weird. Um, and it was about, I don't know, an hour and a half game, Pony Island, something like that. An hour, an hour and a half. Yeah, I think it's it took not, me two not hours last week. Yeah. And, and it felt, it's one of those games that did not overstay its welcome, but had it gone much longer, it could have just been kind of grating and annoying. Um, yeah. Whereas Inscription is, I think my completed time was like 11 or 12 hours. So it's around where my, I was, yeah. And the thing is, it also did not feel like it was overstaying its welcome, uh, well, no, which, I is, wish, which is kind I, of great. I, I, I want to play more, play it more. <laughs> I know. And so this is, this is not spoilery in any capacity, but you inscription eventually ends and you'll know when it ends. And I will say the last 20 minutes, I wish they'd gone even further with it. Cause like some parts of it feel yeah. like it's kind of abrupt. Like it's just kind of like, Oh, this ends. It's like, Oh, okay. Like, but I, I think the decisions they made to get you there are pretty rad. It's, it's so per I think it's perfectly done because it leaves you wanting to wanting more of it without, mm -hmm. I almost think that would have been better th than if they had tried to draw it into a, like yeah. if it had been one of those, like, well, it's going to be an early access for two years while we make more and more and more content for it. I think it's much better where the way where yeah. it's where it ends. Um, I, I guess where... for for me, I just wanted more more of the lore because there's there sure. ends up being a lot of lore to um, just everything. I, I, I'll, we can dive into some of that later, maybe in a week or two. But I would um, be surprised based on the reception to this game if they don't do maybe not necessarily more with this specific release but if there isn't some kind of expansion to that there's so much work pay like that went into the the peripheral information in this game that i don't even necessarily want to call it lore but like yeah. the 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 creation of you know the card game that's at its core and stuff all of that stuff to me speaks to like 
there will probably be more inscription at some point in the future, whether it's a sequel, whether it's something else that's weird. I don't know. I'm not going to necessarily be mad or disappointed if they don't do that. And I don't think it's like a hundred percent, but I would not be surprised if we see more. And and something else that wouldn't surprise me. uh, I have no evidence for this. I've not seen any discourse for it, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's like a Fez kind of layer to this where you could maybe find something else like even like at a lower level than people have found. Let me tell you, I think maybe, yes, that's true. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) We can, I don't actually know. Yeah. I don't actually know. I found certainly, I found some stuff. I found some stuff. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Are you, we'll talk. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Cause I have some moments where I was like, where I was like, what the fuck? Like, even within the game, that the game has many what the fuck moments, but there were some where I went even more in the like, what the fuck? I it's look like, at that here. It's like, and, there's some stuff in there that seems really deliberate. Yes. And and that made me go like, okay, well, we'll clearly revisit that. And then we didn't. So I think, uh, yeah, yeah, I think there's probably more to figure out there. I, I'm When I say I'm going to, I want to play it more, I actually think I'm going to go back and get all the achievements and like, yeah. Um, no, I, see I, more I, of... I want to do the same. Pat, if if yeah. you look at the inscription spoiler chat in our Discord, yeah. that's one thing that I did, uh, which I would be very curious because I think that has to have something. But mm-hmm. we, we should have a spoiler cast once we have more people that have played it or maybe at the end of the year we can just kind of be more openly talking about it because yeah. it's an important game, I think. Like, And I, I think that's probably not an overstatement. I think it's one that people are going to be talking about for quite some time. Because it's it's doing some really smart things and really innovative, I guess. Like it's doing, it's taking some ideas that started yeah. in like Pony Island and stuff like that, but extrapolating it out way further and doing way more interesting stuff with it. Yeah, what I would say is, um, without spoiling anything, if you looked at the the Steam page and said, "I don't really like roguelike deck builders." but you it still looks interesting you should you should you should play it because it is it is it is a um it's doing uh, it's uh, it's not exactly like a frog fractions thing or anything but it's doing much more than just the simple yeah that is still the the game but there's so much more there um that yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. Uh, i mean we we could talk about it for for hours probably sorry sorry jeff no, we no, will no, later no. Wait, later this year <laughs> like uh basically you just gave the one of the better uh recommendations for it for me because whenever i hear yeah. folks i trust go i found some stuff and yes. like it's all conspiratorial <laughs> i'm like yeah. oh i am in. well i don't know i don't even know what it is yeah. i am you, yeah. you really should play it and, like <laughs> alex and i were actually talking about two different things just yeah. now that we confirmed yeah, we, in the we, we just chat. we we talked about it in the spoiler chat and we were both just like no, that's not what I was talking about. <laughs> I love so, that. So, I love that. Yeah, that's has, so good. Highly recommended, and and anybody can can DM me on Twitter if you're stuck and want some tips to get through the frustrating parts because it's yeah. it's got a little bit of frustration front loaded, but it's, it's worth it's, it to get through it. It's not a perfect video game. Like I I think no. Like there's certainly some parts. There's some rough edges, but it's the the good parts are so good that it's hard uh-huh. to fault it. I still don't personally think there has been a roguelike deck builder as good as Slay the Spire. Since sure. Slay the Spire, I, Slay the I think Spire that's still the king. And Slay the Inscription is not as good of a of a card game as Slay the Spire, but it's good. I mean, it's it's yeah. it's it, what's there is fun and solid, and then the places it goes are you got to see them. You could turn that card game into a physical card game, even with Absolutely. some of the mechanics that get added. Like totally, I hope they do. I would buy. I hope they do the too. I would too. Because yeah. there's some cool, there's some cool stuff, especially when you start. This isn't a spoiler. Well, when you start adding modifiers yeah. like that, like yeah, those kinds sure, of things, exactly. like that would be really cool in a in a physical card. The game. tools you start to get as you play through it, yeah, are, are yeah, really especially cool. if they give you a pair of pliers and they're just like, all right, play, play this card game. <laughs> <laughs> well, they also have to include the, They have to what? include the knife too. Yeah, t- totally. Have you gotten to the knife, Andre? Uh, that is the last thing I did. I have not used it. Oh, okay. Have fun. Yeah. So they should definitely include the knife in the. Uh, in, like in, I told you, I played the Resident Evil Seven DLC where you're playing blackjack, and if you lose, you will lose a finger, or like, you know, sure. whatever. Yeah, it's fingers. Like, that's I, it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Fing- easy peasy. Okay. Lose a finger. Yeah. I already went to the dentist today. Like I don't. 
<laughs> so you, <laughs> so the pliers, the pliers hit well for you. Yeah. The sound uh, when you use the pliers always just made oh, me really good. uncomfortable because I was wearing headphones. It's something. And oh, they make it sound. Like, that, it make it. Crack, they make it. Yeah. Like, they make it sound like it's coming from your own head. Um, <laughs> definitely uh general body horror content warnings for this oh, game uh, <laughs> very much yes <laughs> yeah it's nothing mm. like nothing like super explicit or like graphic mm. but um, it, it, nothing super graphic uh, that i've seen uh, it, uh you know, yeah keep playing it, it depends also, on your the, it depends on it depends yeah. on your tolerance for it yeah yeah if you already also, like horror it's yeah. fine. You're fine. And I also would say don't worry too much about like jump scares or anything like that. Oh god. It's, I yeah. would I would say it is it any? is in the No, I would say it's there, in the horror genre, but it's It's, it's more like psychological it's, horror. Um yes, there's for one sure. there's yeah. I can think of one very specific situation which was far more tense than anything else in the game because yeah. you don't know what it could do. Um but other yeah, than but that it's, it's it's not that scary, quote unquote. It's yeah. it's more just like fascinating. Sam, Sam, it's the kind of game that that Sam would be like, oh, I don't think I can play this, but you, if you're listening, Sam, you can get through the whole thing. You'll be fine. That's that Sam was playing it. He is. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. So inscription sounds like it holds up through the rest of the game. Yeah. I'm, I, I started it, play it, and I'm enjoying it. So. Yeah. I, uh, I have it on my computer now, so I will be good, playing it uh, today. Uh, specifically for <laughs> the, th the three of you as you play it, just don't click on anything. Don't even go into that <laughs> spoiler thread in our Discord. No. Oh, absolutely it, it not. Is, I am avoiding that like the plague. <laughs> we're, we're, we've, we've gotten to the point where we've had to start spoiler tagging things within the spoiler conversation <laughs> <laughs> because like... We we you have to like opt into some of these spoilers because of how nuts it goes. It's great. I love it. That's it's yeah. it's the kind of thing. It's also the kind of thing that can only be a video game. Like you can't just yeah. Like you have yes. to interact with this. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, and it's 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 cool, but that it can maintain. The thing I don't like about Pony Island is it doesn't really feel like a game to me. It's more like an experience. It's. Yeah, you just kind of click through it, and none of it's ever particularly challenging, or in my opinion, that interesting mechanically. It's cool, no. but it's yeah. um, it was kind of lacking for me. I think if I if I had played it when it came out, I would have been much more it, 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 like into it. Um, it wasn't bad, but I think I don't like it as much as Doki Doki Literature Club, and sure. uh, that's playing on some similar ideas. Uh, not the same but vaguely adjacent concepts and uh yeah but inscription yeah. i think what i like about it is the video game part is awesome if it's yeah. super fun so um it, it 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 makes it all work much better in my opinion yeah it's more it, i would agree that it's far more mechanically sound um yeah so anyways we could talk about inscription for hours but yeah what's your new journey later yeah, this this new yeah. Around. I, I am so curious. Yeah. So yeah, like in our group chat, um, I basically said, "Hey, guess what? I just dropped a hundred dollars on a series because it's on the Steam sale. Because the the Steam is having a sale at the end of October right now. I think it's only like three or four days. It's actually a pretty good sale." Um, yeah. No, it's not bad. It's through November first, so it's a couple more, couple more days. Yeah. Um, so I would recommend checking that out if you're listening to this in time um so speaking of doki doki literature club this is a series that i recently found out has kind of inspired that and uh also is one of the all-time best rated visual novels there we go hey we knew it was coming say the line <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kat so, said, oh like that's a visual novel and it's like yeah. yo alex it I sure didn't. was yeah I, yeah <laughs> So what I am playing is something called Muv Love. I don't know if any of you have oh, ever heard God, of Muv yeah. Love. Oh, God, yeah, I've heard of it. So yeah. I've, yeah. I've heard people speak in hushed tones about Muv Love alternative specifically, which I have not sounds, gotten into. Sounds dirty. It, 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 sure. But like it, from what I understand, and I, I picked up the entire series because there's... There are Gundams uh, there's... in the first picture on the Steam page. What? <laughs> so it... 
from what I understand, and that could potentially be a spoiler, so maybe don't yell that out to people, um, is that... <laughs> it's the first picture on yeah, the Steam page. I know, page. <laughs> I know. But, like, there's some stuff that happens in, in that game. I've, I'm only about an hour and a half in, and it's a visual novel, so from it's going to be, like, a 100-hour journey for me to finish this, uh, much like Umineko. But that's the thing, is when people talk about some of the best VNs of all time, Muv Love is often ranked as high if not higher than umineko and i already thought umineko was my favorite piece of media so looking forward to seeing what this is so far about like i said an hour hour and a half in i don't really like the main character but i think that you're supposed to not like the main character at this point he's just kind of a dick (laughs) like he's just kind of an asshole who's kind of self-centered and like all this kind of stuff uh but i'm already seeing some of the kind of uh the roots that things like Doki Doki Literature Club pulled from in how they characterize some people and how they're showing off settings and how it's like, oh, this character who's very happy and like go lucky seems like they are not talking about certain parts of their life in a very avoidant way. (laughs) Like, you know, it's, it's, it seems like it's going in a very thoughtful direction with things like mental health and things of that nature. So, uh, the art is really cool. It is. It's really nice. Um, the localization's good. The voice acting is good. It's fully voice acted, much like Umineko. Um, yeah, it's interesting. But again, I probably can't say much about it yet because I'm about an hour into a sixty-hour plus journey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and also, it's, a it's hard good. Oh, go for it. I was just gonna say, one of the hard things to find was the play order. <laughs> I had to look up sure. Reddit mm. threads and stuff, being like, okay, so what order do you play mm. this in? Because there's Muvlove Love and Muvlove Love Alternative or all alternate sorry uh alternative alternate I don't alternative. Know. alternative alternative yeah. thank you and then there's like seven other games on steam <laughs> and Muv love extra yeah unlimited well, extra and unlimited are wrapped up okay. inside what they call Muv love so okay extra and unlimited that's the order you're supposed to play and then into alternative and then everything else is just side stories so the first so game... no kingdom hearts is what i'm hearing the first game looks really yeah. cute yeah. and then you click game. and so like like the first game like you look at it and it's like oh it's cute you know there's anime girls and stuff and then uh you click into Muv Love Alternative and the Steam description is playtime's over time for despair and the yeah. end is oh, therapy oh, so not it's included. Ropa. Except this is this, <laughs> this this far predates Danganronpa. I think it came out in like 2006. So yeah, it, it's yeah. been around for quite a while. Yeah. The yeah. only thing I'll say having ventured through this is oh, yeah. uh, be careful of episode nine because it goes from zero to 1000 miles per hour and if you, i recommend a chaser like having a having a cool down <laughs> you know just something where you're like i'm gonna do something after i'm gonna take a beautiful walk through the wilderness or Stick. have a nice drink of wine you know <laughs> looking forward to it that's I would say the same for people who want to watch a show that I've recommended in the past called Link Click when you get to episode five. <laughs> you guys should watch that show. Yeah, I, 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 in, in our uh, anime group chat, I, there's a, an image of like, of like, I should watch Madoka Magica. It's like the feeling of existential despair. You should watch Madoka Magica. Yeah, it's like <laughs> that level how it of starts, like, how it starts, how it yeah. ends. Yeah. Like yeah. in between, you're like, oh, fuck, like, oh cool. what is life? And then it's like, yeah, then, you should watch this. And then, and then everybody, like, after you watch it, you're like, join the cult of you should watch Madoka Magica. Yeah. So, but yeah, Jeff, I'm glad to know that you have gone through this journey. So I might poke you with occasional thoughts. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Poke, poke me with thoughts. Yeah. Because right yeah. now, um, what's his name? Takeru? He's just a total mm-hmm. asshole. He's just constantly yes, he punch, punching his friends. He's just super self-centered. He's just dick yeah. i imagine that changes but uh, it I'm, does. I'm, I'm going to carry on through it despite not liking the dude <laughs> yeah there, no. it, like this there's that Ash. uh pro cd <laughs> video of the character that you assure everybody that gets better at the end and i wonder if it's that where it's like <laughs> no this character yeah. gets good i swear <laughs> i'm curious jeff since you have gone through this yes. with no spoilers or anything yeah. um like the steam page does list it as like sexual content and nudity which is yeah. fine i'm not like not 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 hating on that in any way but wow. i wonder can you like 
kind of play through it if you're sort of like how how present and is that through not at, not at first and then it get like there's a reason why even hardcore gamers with who are in the nihilistic anesthesia of not feeling anything usually will rate this game PTSD out of 10. Sure. Um, so I'm uh, to be blunt. Um, if you have any kind of any kind of sensitivity or any kind of uh, sort of uh, sight of of uh, trauma surrounding sex in general sure probably don't yeah yeah that makes sense <laughs> yeah. that's a good that's uh, like, good to know i, I would stick say with the early stuff yeah i would say similar we talked about this what two years ago with wonderful every day down the rabbit hole sim i, I imagine it's going to be similar to that which had some mm -hmm. pretty fucked up stuff in a sexual nature mm -hmm. yeah i what guess like say about me that you say the phrase PTSD out of 10, and I'm like, oh, I want that. Well, you know, personally, I... <laughs> Fuck me up, fam. <laughs> that kind of, if that kind of... If it's saying something, um, yeah. that's something... I don't have specific triggers around it, so I guess it's more the, like, what I don't enjoy is, is when games like this... Um, and by like this, I just mean kind of in the larger um well anime and just games in general i shouldn't even say games like this yeah. when what they're doing is leering at characters trauma. that's the thing that it, trauma but also just like the fan service when it when it goes from you know like the atelier kind of fan service that we talk about with the extra costumes that doesn't really bother me i'm not one to purchase like buy into right. that stuff it doesn't really bother me if it's if it's a situation where like it's built for players to kind of leer at it when i say it doesn't bother me i mean it wouldn't put me off of playing the game it bothers me that people yeah. want to do that but it, it's yeah. not like it would stop me from playing it but when the game itself is saying to you look at this aren't you into this isn't this it's like look look how like i don't know that's when it starts to get and when it's like we're supposed to root for characters who's whole thing is being a perv that's right. when i start to kind of you know in a in a bad way um that's mm -hmm. when i start to kind of have a hard time i guess yeah uh, and i I, th yeah. I think i would in general agree especially if it's the kind of thing where it's it's using things like trauma or ptsd as like the selling feature it's like oh this is what you want right and then Absolutely. they don't ex they don't explore yeah. it they don't uh, right. come to terms with right. it and they yeah. don't do anything exactly. with it like i think you have to right. have you have to have both like if it is just purely the shock factor then it's just like oh then you're just a five night at freddy's you don't have anything particularly right. like, positive I... like interesting or interesting to say and sorry i'll i'll oh, get back to you yeah, awesome. no worries. uh because like that's that's the thing i love about umineko so much is because uh yes it does have the traumatic kind of like this is really fucked up kind of like thing but the thing is that happens about halfway through and then the other half is because uh um ryuki or ryukishi sorry um was a counselor and worked with children and you know like that was his job he the rest of that story is dealing with grief it is dealing with trauma it is the real world ways that people approach these problems and like how that has affected them for the potentially the rest of their lives and it's a, it's exploring that in a potentially positive and uh like constructive way that you could look at that and take lessons from it like i think that's where you know ptsd out of 10 can be really effective because if you genuinely believe the things that the characters are going through and it's something that you're like wow that seems fairly real and then they approach the consequences of it afterwards and how you how one would deal with it or how it one would have their lives and perspectives and things affected by it i think that's you know i think that's valuable more so than just you know entertaining yeah yeah anyways the yeah sorry i don't want to cut off allison yeah no, no, no. It, <laughs> basically what i was uh you know I, i'm in the same boat where it's like i say that you say that and i'm like oh that sounds interesting but it's like i do want it to have that level of being something interesting rather than just totally. shock value like shock value isn't interesting to me but like 
hey, we're going to fuck you up, but intentionally for interesting reasons. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's good. Well, and, and you know, a, the, a good example, and I'm sure that, like, pushing past it there, I believe you that it goes interesting places, and it's like, uh, and, and so certainly not trying, like, to, 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 be too hard on something that you you enjoyed and affected you so much but like when i started reading i sort of i thought i had the thought of like maybe i'll read the umineko manga because you know i'm not always individual novels and they linger so long in the manga on the like let's figure out a way the main character at the time who appears to be the main character trying to figure out a way to get his cousin to grab his other cousin's boobs and like how funny it is and how it's like and it's very it's like, what are we doing here? This is just very off-putting to me personally, because at that, because it, it didn't feel at the time, like it was going to go anywhere with that stuff. It just was like, oh, this is just anime bullshit. <laughs> like, this is just like, let's get this one young girl to grab this other young girl's boobs and, and yeah, make a that- show of it for the reader. And that, that's like hard wall for me. I can't. Yeah that stuff is hard for me to get past yeah and that's the kind of thing i would say if you push past it you actually do find significant reasons specifically for that behavior which come up sure and it's it's yeah, actually really fascinating I believe when, they, when they are when they approach it yeah it's it's kind of fascinating yeah. but i was with you kind of i was like this is a little eh but and i it, and, yeah and even hearing that i mean i get why that would be an interesting kind of topic to broach and discuss but to me it's like i can't even think of a way that i would be interested to know more about that character's what led that character to that <laughs> frame of mind <laughs> like i can't mm-hmm. it's just so it's sometimes that stuff kind of stuff can yeah. cause me to bounce off so well, well you'll uh, be happy to know that the very first scene in love love is the main dude basically grabbing his best friend's boobs good good <laughs> Uh, well, well, it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. It's 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 a lot. Um, I I what I'm gonna say, Pat, is what I knowing what I do of your taste. I'm not. I'm I'm thinking you're gonna bounce off this one. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, <laughs> and that's that's fine. Um, it's it's a ride. It, episode nine is the one where I would be like really cautious, like because uh, we start to get into. Oh, I can imagine. I mean, yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out how to say it. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm uh, Urotsuki Doji uh, sort, of, sort of stuff. So we'll just leave it there. Um, sure. <laughs> yeah, that does sound similar to what I was describing before. OK, great. That sounds horrific. That sounds haunting. Boy, mm-hmm. what what else has been haunting and horrific? Jeff, that you can tell us all about. <laughs> yes, 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 and that Andre can tell us about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. actually, yeah, but it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, I want to, I want to talk about House of Ashes first, and then we'll okay. get into yeah. the larger, the broader discussion. We'll, we'll yeah. zoom in and then zoom out. Yeah. Uh, so House of Ashes zoom for in, those who zoom don't know. Out. Keep rolling, rolling. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good uh f- speaking of things that keep rolling super massive's uh dark pictures anthology has kept rolling on with house of ashes super massive being the creators of until dawn and then man of madon and uh what was the last one they did uh little hope uh, little hope yeah okay still haven't uh, gotten I, through man of madon we got through like half of it and then i fell off oh uh, yeah, uh, Until Dawn has so far has been like their top Man of a Dawn. I enjoyed. Yeah. I think it was like a solid, like, like scope reduction, uh, as, so they could do like these yearly games. Little Hope ended up not. I didn't like want to go back. I played it once. I was like, okay, that's fine, but I didn't want to end up going back through it. And then, and they kind of had the same problems, uh, Little Hope and Man, and Man of Madon, where minor spoilers, like everything's kind of explained away. Like it's like, oh, this is how everything works. It doesn't do what Until Dawn did, uh, which I ended up really appreciating. But if you didn't appreciate what Until Dawn did in like kind of the latter half, then you might have preferred Man of Madon or Little Hope. 
uh, it seems like House of Ashes, this newer one, is much more like Until Dawn in that way, uh, which is not a spoiler. I'm only like, I don't know, an hour and a half in or something. Uh, the game starts or is based in uh, Iraq, 2003. You were playing. That's right. Y- y- this game takes place in Iraq in 2003. It's you were a bunch fraught. of. You were playing mm-hmm. like a team of Marines, one uh-huh. of which is played by Ashley Tisdale. What? <laughs> yep. Okay. <laughs> And then there's also an Iraqi, like Iraqi soldier who is on the, oh, what is it, like the, like the Iraqi army who is like fighting against the Marines, like, you know, defending Iraq from the invading forces. Uh, so that's like how this all kind of starts. You start off like, uh, they all, all these games start with like a flashback and they start back in like ancient Sumeria. Uh, and there's like some curse and like an eclipse and a bunch of people die in like this oh. like temple thing. Sorry. That sounds like the start of the mummy starring Brendan Fraser. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. 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 There's like yeah. mummy vibes. There's exorcist vibes. There's descent mm-hmm. vibes here. There's, there's a whole lot going That's on here. Great. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, so it's this game is, is a lot with like you know the setup that i have just explained uh it's much more explosive and action-packed in the in the beginning than any of the previous games are like there's usually like a set piece moment or something at the start like little hope starts with like a big house fire but this is like you are you get into a fight with like iraqi forces like the marines and iraqi forces in like a a firefight and you know people dying uh you do like a you raid a a farm and they've got like it's it's a whole thing and then you end up falling like i don't know they cause a cause like a little like earthquake and a bunch of like you know all your people fall into like the ruins of this old thing where they were doing like human sacrifices in sumeria to like try and get rid of the plague and then everyone died that's one uh, thing about these games. I mean, at least as far as um, uh, Man of Madonna is concerned, is in some ways yeah. it's kind of hard to spoil them because it's like, yeah. it's like, okay, there's going to be paranormal stuff happening mm-hmm. and it's going to be some variant of ghosts or monsters or something. So it's yeah. almost like, oh man i can't believe you spoiled me on the fact that there's monsters in the sumerian temple like oh. of course that's <laughs> yeah that's, like, that's yeah. what and, these games always do and something like to me just listening and not i haven't played any of any of these games actually but hmm. just from what the setup and what you've described it almost kind of sounds like amnesia rebirth to an extent there like, there, there are some like aesthetic wise uh it's not dissimilar to amnesia and, rebirth just because of like the setting and some of the imagery in some ways, it's a shame because I managed to play Until Dawn before it was like just everyone knew exact like before you couldn't know about it without knowing kind of everything about it. Or people and said so get monked. Yeah, so like when the shit starts really popping off and until dawn i was like what the fuck this is so weird <laughs> yeah. like, i assumed that there was nothing paranormal happening at all in that game uh and then when things started getting weird i was like whoa okay this is awesome and then we played yeah. like my partner and i played that game in like two sittings because of it i i played it in one sitting i literally played it f- until dawn no. so like i <laughs> i got it from a red box at like you know 9 p.m or something and went home and i put it in and played through the entire want- thing straight I do want to just a brief aside. So, Sony store on um, their web store is so bad. You yeah. can't find the product pages for Man of Madon or Little Hope at all. Weird. You simply what? cannot. They simply it makes it look like they don't exist. You can find the uh the like the what is mega the pack or whatever. The 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 House of Ashes, you can find the House of Ashes page and on that page it has the the three mm-hmm. pack. But yeah. If you want to look at when I searched just madan nothing came up the uh, except um until dawn came up and if you look up <laughs> dark pictures does it come up nope weird I love it almost makes me wonder up. if they don't sell 
Man of Madan and Little Hope separately anymore? Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. Anyway, it's weird. Anyway. They might. That's very strange. Um, it's on PC too. I'm playing on PS5. It looks great. Yeah, um, I'm thinking I might get the triple back on PS5 and we might restart Man of Madan there for some Halloween weekend. Are, are, are they. Are each of these connected in any capacity, or are they kind of an anthology series? It, it's it's they they are an anthology. Uh, okay. They are kind of connected they, in that yeah. they all have like the curator who is this it's, like it's, spooky guy in like a big oh, library. So it's and he's it's, like pulling out like, books and he's like, like Tales oh, from the this is the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, okay. or Alfred Hitchcock presents, or something like that. Yeah, okay. it's definitely okay. that. Yeah, it. it's that kind of thing. It rules okay. too. That cool. those bits with the curator are awesome. From what I've played of Man of Madon. Uh, yeah, they're fun. Uh, they're, they always play like some ridiculous like intro oh, with like intros him dramatically so, walking down a hallway. It's so with, good, it's, and it it's plays so like an, almost. It's almost like an X Files theme during that sequence too. It's like a very like I recall some theremin in there, and it's very oh, yeah. like. Uh, you know, things are about to get spooky, and they do the title sequence with all the the, the characters and stuff. It's good. It's, Pat, it's good. I don't know what you're talking about because I just searched on the web store and I found Man of Dawn instantly. Yeah, I don't know. It's are you are I you spelling to... it wrong? Are you M E D A N? That's how I'm spelling it. Okay, well, uh, I go to us.playstation.com and no, I type in store.playstation.com. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Well, uh, anyway, PlayStation.com, same thing. All right. Well, it comes up for me, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, I'm looking forward to playing it. It it's it looks really good. It I want to see what they end up doing with this uh, with the setting. And this seems like a situation where I will want to go back through and like try different options and like outcomes, which I did sure. with Man of Dawn. I played it a couple times, like maybe three, four times just to try and get different endings and keep everyone alive or kill everyone or do whatever, where I didn't feel the desire to do that at all with Little Hope because of the, what that game story is. It just like I got to the end, I was like, oh. Well, that's that's just the story then. Like, there's no, I don't want to change anything. There's no point to changing anything, kind of, uh, based on how it wraps up. But uh, yeah, uh, so far it seems good, uh, and I'm glad because it's doing what I liked about the first Until Dawn, and I, I, if it continues to do that, if it do, if it like doubles back, I'll be disappointed. But mostly just curious what the hell they're doing with this intro or with this setting. Yep. Bizarre. It is. It is. Uh, but you know, horror, horror gets bizarre sometimes. It does. As it gets strange, the more bizarre, the better. (laughs) Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes it's just too weird. You know, you get, Get some weird art, art house stuff. You get get, 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 some, get get some eraser head, and you're like, "Excuse oh, me." Yeah, no, that's a, that's you're in you're you're striking at my wheelhouse now, and I'm <laughs> yep. very happy in here. Well, good news because in the news segment, eraser head the game announced. <laughs> oh my god! Oh god! I don't want god. it. Sadly, it's an NFT. Oh. oh. No. oh. They got him again. Yeah, <laughs> they got him. Uh, so how do I before that? Before that, yeah. How uh, do we go back into that? Um, <laughs> it, it's, um, it, it, this has been a year of horror. This has been two years of horrors. Yeah, it's been yeah. Two years of horror. and yeah, uh, Jeff too. Je- <laughs> Jeff, Jeff is here to break down. Oh yeah, the past the past two year years and of horror, horror gaming. <laughs> yeah, uh, gaming, non gaming. I I don't know. It's always an adventure with you. It's true. Uh, it is every single time. Uh, and this time we're going to be talking about uh, something similar to NFTs, which is to say something with fake value, but also somehow compelling. Uh, mm, so we're going to start friendship. with. Uh, <laughs> Damn. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to start with uh, talking about what uh, is called a fake past and faux retro horror. So there are two games I recently played on stream, uh, and that is Paratopic and Night Slink, which is uh, a fascinating what did kind you call me? of. Uh, yeah, I know, right? Night Slink. 
And I'm like, you know, I had been recommended Paratopic and Night Slink a couple of times. Yeah, and... I actually have Paratopic. I need to play it. Oh, have it. you played it? No, I need to. I bought it because it looked so cool when it came out. And then it's short, but it's yeah. it, it, Pat is it is exact. It is made for you. It is I'm sure the it history is. of Amagahara Fault. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll play it this weekend. OK, uh, it's. Uh, these two games rely on a kind of faux retro aesthetic in order to help sell their horror. Mm -hmm. So this isn't necessarily your blood, your gore, your your uh, Eli Roth writ large. Uh, this is very much like uh, sort of an art house kind of production, tapping into the kinds of narratives that you find in, say, creepy pasta boards. Uh, you know, I'm reminded of the old urban legend of, oh, I found that copy of Majora's Mask. And this copy mm -hmm. of Majora's Mask mm -hmm. is cursed. Or, or the, the uh, cursed old, Pokemon good old games. Ben. Yeah, Lavender Town, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, Paratopic and Night's Link are very much speaking to that kind of horror space. Um, you know, the, the game and glitch gone wrong. And Paratopic is very much... Um, I, I would I would kind of quantify it as this is David Lynch meets um, Tarkovsky, so Stalker. Mm -hmm. There we um, go. All right, and it's it has some it has some body horror, but it's not it's aggressively not like uh, like John Carpenter or Wes Craven. It's very much in the realm of um, Cronenberg meets again David Lynch. Um, the only I cannot give you plot information, not just because I don't want to spoil it, but because it's deliberately not there. Good, um, good, good. <laughs> so basically what what you do is you're ostensibly on you play as one, two characters unclear and they have different jobs and sometimes those jobs go wrong. And it's very much like a dream. This whole thing has dream logic. And on the other hand, uh, uh, Night Slink, unlike Paratopic, Night Slink is very much like Kafka. This is Kafka. This is uh, something, probably Kafka meets Philip K. Dick. Uh, and these are really short games. They're like maybe 90 minutes. Yeah, maybe. So like you can you can bang these out and, and replay them and have a, have a good time. Um, Night Slink, that one I can give you a little bit more plot information. You are a night courier delivering cassette tapes to an apartment building. And things go weirdly because of what is on the tapes and what isn't on the tapes. And we kind of go from there. And that whole thing, these these pieces kind of got me thinking about there there was a time and, and, and maybe this is less a, a function of generation and, and time passing uh, generally for the population, but more of a personal history thing. There was a time where when we were playing video games and we didn't know what was happening, that we would reach a boundary and figure out what would have like try to figure out how to cross it. And if we did, like, say, I'm thinking of Link's Awakening with the wall glitch. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, where you can do the map skip and then all of a sudden everything glitches out and the game's different. There's a kind of alterity and otherness about the game that happens when you do that. And I was wondering, uh, for you all, uh, was there a game that did that for you? That, that there was some kind of weird bit that just stuck out at like a shard in your mind and you're like, what is happening what is is the game possessed or is oh, it <laughs> shard? I thought you said shart. No. <laughs> get your get your mind out of your um, you know pants. You know, I, I, I'm gonna assume be. Alex's answer to this is a dump in the dark. Yeah. No, there you go. <laughs> I there have a serious actually, answer, but I, 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 I also have last. A, I, 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 I also have a serious answer, but I, I'll, I'll, I, I need to I need to I need to consider for a bit, but I do need to ask: Is yeah. Night Slink? I'm mm -hmm. looking at this uh, about this game. The first yeah. three sentences: The world is silent. People mm -hmm. hide behind closed doors. You must yeah. deliver the tapes to them. <laughs> is Night Slink a strand game? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I just oh no! <laughs> I just put that together, and I'm uh, I'm disappointed in myself 
I'm disappointed in in the world. Um, is it a strand game? Uh, it could be, and that's the depressing part. But okay. it's also more than that. Thankfully, there's okay. no Kojima okay. bullshit. Hey, that's I, maybe I'm I'm disappointed now. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. But uh, okay. Uh, but yeah. So as far as if, if if there's not a game, it's okay. That that has stuck out. Like we're I, like. I think like I experienced that for sure with like Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. Those both. I mean, a lot of those N64 games, right? Like we did it a lot with with the banjo games. There was this like, um, what's there's we were convinced that there was something more to do. There was always something more to do in this in a way that. It wasn't necessarily horror, but it was like unsettling still because it felt yeah. like there was it was it was just those worlds because of the construction of them. They it felt like there was something behind as soon as you realized that like the textures were paper thin mm -hmm. and the geometry yeah. was there was stuff in between the geometry that it, well, that it felt like there had to be something more there. It's kind of like when if if y'all had N64s back in the day and mm -hmm. there was that like if you zoomed in on that part in Goldeneye off of the dam and there was like those buildings over there and you could see people and you could see like Absolutely. barrels and you're like what what's over there we can't get exactly. there How, what what is that like I think, it's the, um, it's that kind of mystery I experienced yes. that in in World of Warcraft as well you know there's like the, for before cataclysm before you could just fly all over the place there were there were places where you would take the the taxis the flight points mm -hmm. and you could see stuff that you couldn't yeah. get to and it was very like okay well i know there's something there yeah. um and yeah. and i can't i just can't quite get to it and that was interesting I remember... mist also did that to me because yeah. with mist it was like there were so many of those objects that were clickable especially in i forget the name of the the age but the age with the torture equipment everywhere that was like terrifying to me because most of it wasn't yeah. relevant to puzzles, but you could still push buttons and interact with it in a way that was very unsettling to me. Um, so yeah, I've my my gaming history is kind of pockmarked with those sorts of things, and that's part of why Outer Wilds was so gripping to me right off the bat because it is a game that's built around playing with those ideas, not always in very rarely, in fact, in a horror context, but generally in a you know brain teasing way uh, all the way through what are you gonna say andre oh i was gonna say that i remember watching like an x play segment where they're like here's how to get into all the weird places that you see uh while you're riding like the griffins or whatever and like okay you got to get on your mountain you got to like you know skyrim your way up this mountain to like get on top mm -hmm. and you can find this abandoned campsite and you know that's it there's yeah, I think nothing here but you can get up there you know uh, games that like elder scrolls really did that too earlier on now it's like part of the marketing that you can become a vampire but like yeah, yes, in morrowind sure. it was like it was okay secret. i'm camping i need to rest so i'm camping overnight and then like you're a you're awoken and there's a monster like a vampire on you that has like bitten you and you find a note that's like hey you're kind of mm. fucked now <laughs> just so you know you got to like two days to solve this problem otherwise you're going to be a vampire forever and it was awesome that stuff was very yeah. cool yeah yeah no absolutely and that is the, so these are great examples and i love all of these examples because they basically get at that feeling when you're ta when you're playing paratopic or night's link of citing a past that is unreachable citing a site a place that is unreachable and that sort of mystery that kind of keeps it out of reach I, I, it really enhances the horror for me because i'm not really much of a gore person um i mean yeah i appreciate body horn when have you as as like a makeup craft weirdly but i'm more sure. like you know absurd you know give me give me absurdity yes uh, I, I i am there with you <laughs> and uh yeah so uh if you like bizarre non-linear uh, a past that never existed and yet luring you to its mystery. Definitely, definitely take, uh, check out Paratopic and Night's Link. I think they're like five or three dollars. They're yeah. very, very, yes, very they, low barrier to entry. Uh, yeah, yes. exactly. Um, which is important when you are uh, doing a year of playing scary games for literal 
cash. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so um, well, I'll actually, try to Jeff, keep... Yeah. Before, before you move on to that, have you ever played uh, the game I'm Scared? Like all, all one word. I am scared. I'm scared. So I am scared. Uh, that is in my itch.io uh, library, waiting to be played. There's, I have some gems in there that I'm, I'm saving yeah. for a special occasion. Um, but among them are, uh, I am scared, and um, God, what's the other? Uh, Kitty Horror Show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I would, I would recommend both of those to you specifically after that conversation. Yeah. I'm scared. I'm scared was the thing that made me think uh i found i'm scared before itch like when yep, it was same. just an exd you could find yeah it was um, just on a site and you just downloaded it yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah that was the thing like, that this is this is fine <laughs> yeah that game was the thing that made me think i couldn't play horror games oh, and it wow. wasn't yeah. until like i do dove deep on amnesia over the last couple of years that i'm now back to like Okay, no, I can play. I like. I love horror games. I can play. Yeah, uh, Dude, I, I'm scared. I, I'm, is, is it deeply unsettling? It's deeply very oh, yeah. unsettling. Uh, yeah. I've only watched playthroughs of it, and that's like, it's like yeah. it's it is upsetting in a it's, way that you will really appreciate when you get to it. Yeah, and I, just so you know, uh, the developer of that, the single developer, just put out a game yesterday called Ooh. Mirror Mirror Layers on Steam. Uh, so mm. I think I might end up checking that out because I really loved it. Absolutely. Here. This looks real good, too. They, oh, should, they should have called it Layers of Mirror. <laughs> <laughs> so it can go along with that. <laughs> layers of Fear. Um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, anyways, sorry. I didn't didn't mean to interrupt. I just wanted to... No, no, yeah. that's good. That's uh, good. You, you'll you'll um, like I'm Scared, I believe. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, that. Man, I, I looked at the... I, I looked at the, the whole blurb of it and I'm like, oh yes. And mirror layers looks really good. Like I am, looks, I am about this. It yeah. looks interesting. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. So, Focus anyways, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um, being a longtime horror fan is a, in addition to the rest of my nerdery. Um, I was interested in trying to revamp the multiplayer experience because I, I you know, everyone was talking about multiplayer gaming and everyone's like, oh, you, you know, why don't you play more? And I'm like, I, um, I don't do competitive very well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's not a thing I do. Um, and thankfully, Phasmophobia dropped and it literally changed everything um yeah that, that isn't to say it's such an amazing game that it did that but it was sort of a the the inertia the catalyst that got things going and after spending a year of of ghost hunting of which there are three games that i'll cite there's phasmophobia obviously and then there it's is, is it there's its french competitor uh ghost hunter corp and then you have the the sort of we're going to swing the other way with our horror, but we're going to do a similar thing. And that's called Devour. Mm -hmm. So uh, Ghost Hunter Corp is uh, uh, developed by Studio Goupil. Uh, Sacre boo. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> we love and Are respect you? the Frank, Frank, the Frank language. <laughs> we love and respect the Frank language. <laughs> the Frank language. <laughs> we're, we're a couple of, we're just a bunch of Francophones over here. Oh, my I'm God. I'm talking about cat. Oui, si tu veux. Wow, mon chat, si tu veux, je peux être notre représentative française ici, donc ce n'est pas si terrible. Yeah. Now we have representation. French language, like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was great. Um, Devour is developed by Straight Back Games, um, and of course, uh, Kinetic Games uh, handles Phasmophobia. Now, uh, the primary thesis I want to bring to bear here is that um, when we're thinking about haunting and ghost hunting games, we're still operating in a mode as if we were scientists. Right. The, the, all these things with, well, with the exception of devour, we'll get to it. Go, Ghost Hunter Corp and Phasmophobia are very much like we are serious, respectable scientists who just happen to have an EMF reader and these particular things. And we're going to, we're going to typify, we're going to do a Charles Darwin, an entire Charles Darwin on a ghost <laughs> and we're gonna <laughs> figure out what the species of ghost is i love it know? so much <laughs> God, it rules. 
<laughs> and, you know, you, you go into the house and phasmophobia, it's, it's kind of funny when you're when you're diving in, especially with this new update that just came out, which, by the way, a new update came out. And uh, there's a campsite yeah. now. Yeah. And just a couple days ago, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot. Uh, it the ghosts. Uh, it's good. It's good. Um, and we'll we'll get to sort of the other part of like phasmophobia and ghost hunter corp and why those two exist. Um, and how their update history has gone because they finally got it right. There was a long time where they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even played since they did the visual early access, a lot of the tools and stuff. Early access or real early access vibes. And one of the things that uh, Phasma players uh, like myself keep on like running into is like, well, wait a minute, there's an ethical breach here. We're just scientists who come into someone's home and we go, okay. Uh, the, based on this evidence, you probably have an Ondrio or a, um, a Raichu or yeah. a Revenant, you know, and, and basically yeah. Pokemon begin. in this house. Um, uh, I mean, <laughs> I, the Raichu? Raichu is actually new. Um, I don't, I'm, I was very amused. It's apparently an electric ghost that it's makes a, elect, yeah. electric items and plays the drums. I assume. Oh yeah. It plays the drums. Uh, <laughs> uh, it can it futzes with appliances. That's that's its thing. Is appliances. So it really likes electric drum sets. That's what that's what I'm. Yeah, hearing. yeah. Phil Collins yeah. is its jam. Uh, <laughs> so, <clears throat> but you're still just doing diagnostics. Um, you go in. One of your friends gets killed. Uh, you tell the family, uh, here's what the ghost is. They give you uh, $120. <laughs> say like $40. <laughs> yeah. And then you and, leave. And you get <laughs> the insurance payout here. For, you, get, you get half of the value of your friend's gear as an insurance payout. Right. As long as you're not operating on professional nightmare. And if you right. are, then you get Or you don't have insurance. <laughs> <laughs> it's the real American experience. Uh. Um, <laughs> true. Oh God! Uh, so this Alan sort of... Wake American experience. That's <laughs> that's that that's the second game, right? That's the second game by Kinetic Games. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we have that, and people were interested in it. And then, but we also had Ghost Hunters Corp, and that one was basically, as far as I can tell, a game solely designed to address the complaints addressed at Phasmophobia. Because they went, okay, what if we did the exorcism? What if we did uh, the van actually shakes and stuff? And it's, I mean, from a mechanic standpoint, it's probably a superior game to, to Phasmo. Um, from a coding stability and graphic stability standpoint, no. No, they got a long way to go. It's very much an early access. You can't change the resolution unless you change the resolution of your monitor beforehand. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's, so, it's, you know. Mm. So is, is it kind of, so phasmophobia, like basically if you're in the van, you're in a safe place. Is, is Correct. Ghost Hunter Core the kind of thing where it's taking away any form of safe place when you're engaging with a, a quote unquote campaign? Yes. Uh, so if you, if you don't hold the van door. The, the ghost will come in and wreck your shit. Uh, cool. And that's, that's the, that's the specific term. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, we're the, scientists here. The, come on. Yeah. We're scientists yeah. here. Yeah. Um, the, the hardest thing, uh, the, the only issue I, I'm finding with ghost hunters corp is that uh, besides the, the huge amount of graphical and sort of uh, code level bugs, which they'll work it out um, yeah. is uh some of the exorcisms, you have to discover the exorcisms with the evidence. And some of those ask a lot of you, the, the player. So uh, here's an here's a example. You are given an exorcism book. It has a prayer in it. You have to read the prayer out loud where the ghost can hear you multiple times. Just like hey, you it Pikachu. Works. And yeah. uninterrupted, and yes. <laughs> and if it's interrupted, it doesn't count. You have to start oh. over. And ghosts in this game are very, very fast and very murdery. Um, and so basically, you it got to the point where it became almost, when I was playing, a speed wrapping battle 
Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> where literally I, I'm trying to if I can remember some of the lines. Um, the power of God compels you. We hear stand in, stand in the darkness against you. The power of God compels you. We hear stand in the darkness darkness against you. By by the forces of God, we will send you back down to hell where you belong. You know, it's very very much like that. Great, <laughs> and we're all just try basically escalating uh, as we're playing. And it, it was a, a lot here. of fun. Yeah, it, yeah, it's Eminem. And that's fine. But yeah, Eminem is clearly rules at Ghost Hunters Corp. That's all I'll say. The the god they respect is the rap god. <laughs> Yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> the rap god compels you. The rap god compels you. <laughs> exactly. Uh and then that's, on the other hand you have Devour. Interesting. Uh Devour is unlike Phasmo, unlike Ghost Hunters Corp, which has a very, very, very thin plot. Devour goes, no, no, no. We are opting for the plot thickness with at least five C's. And we are going to have a whole a whole story and to me it's much narratively stronger um the the premise is that your cultists all the player characters are cultists who are returning to the cult uh a la lord of illusions uh the cloud of barker film to save their cult leader leader from being possessed well it turns out she they're a little they're a little late they didn't they didn't plan this in time and uh now anna in the first level uh is possessed and now you have to exercise uh what is it uh azazel um out of anna now as they've added maps different characters become possessed by the same demon so um i think there's a, a second one where it's a asylum um and the, they they do their best to sort of navigate that problematic history of uh, incarceration and asylum there um and it has a, pr- a pretty good ambiance. Um, and then their third one they just uh, released was the Inn, which is a Japanese inn where um, one of your cultist friends turns into a spider demon lady, who was a Jurigomo, I think. If I, or I might be, might be uh, remembering that wrong. So, so rather question. than having this... Yeah. So when it comes to the, the quote-unquote cultists, in every scenario, is it always the same group? Or like... Uh, or is it like, oh, this one, you're kind of like Heaven's Gate. This one, you're kind of like Moonies and, you know, like, or, or is it always <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, yeah. it's always the same cult? It's always the same cult. Okay. And it's the same cult every time. Um, it's just with per- the progressive levels, the players that you can play as eventually become possessed and become the primary antagonist of that level. Ah, gotcha. Okay. So, um, yeah, for, uh, you could play as a character named Molly in the first level. And then the second one, Molly is the one who's possessed. Um. So we're, we're seeing where it goes. It's interesting. I, I again, quite, a, quite like the horror and ambiance and environment building quite a bit better in Devour. Um, the only issue is that it's, it's excruciatingly hard. Even with skilled players, it's excruciatingly yeah, hard I, to win a match. I think it looks like something I'd really like, except that, one, it looks like Phasmo is just the right level of scary to mm-hmm. me where i like uh, coming back to horror games like i went i got through the amnesia games and was like well yeah there were moments where i was kind of spooked and thought it was kind of scary and i maybe jumped a couple of times but generally i didn't think they were like like i had hyped myself up that they were so incredibly scary and coming getting through them i was like well no actually those were fine I, that was perfect like i like that and phasmo is sort of in that vein of like yeah i still get the like the the I don't I have I haven't played it in nearly as much as you or even as my partner who really enjoys it. Um but but in the you know couple dozen hours at least that I have played it, I I've still have moments where, you know, if I'm I guess forty hours, uh uh I'm if I'm stone cold sober uh, and have not had a, 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 a few beers when I'm playing. There are moments where, yeah, I don't really want to be in the basement alone, and it gets it pricks my 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 the skin on the, the hair on the back of my neck if I like hear the ghost say something and I'm in the basement, you know. So like that's perfect for me. Devour is one that looks like something I'd really like, but also it might be it might be over the edge a little it bit. might be over the edge i don't want it to be because it looks fun and as a movie i would watch it in a heartbeat like the, oh, yeah. the the creature designs are such that like they look like 
exactly scary enough to me for a movie. But I don't some of these some of these characters are like I don't oh, know yeah. if I'd be able to like They're deal with it. it. And they get if right they, in your face. I'll, I'll, I'll post you. I'll post you a clip on the Discord. Uh, that yeah, way you could it, see what the big scare is. It, it seems. Yeah. It seems like Devour is much more oppressive than the others. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's good. a good way to put that's it. A yeah. Really good way to put it. And um, I I'm, want to play that, but I, I someday. <laughs> If 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 you have a free evening and want to play yeah. it, maybe I'll jump on it for five bucks and give it a whirl because yeah. it seems like something I really want to play, but I am apprehensive about it because of the, the, the degree of the scares. I will I will applaud their accessibility because they noticed that a lot of players were like, "Hey, um, this is setting off my epilepsy when you get caught." and they're like are they like oh shit okay let's fix that so there's actually uh, an option to disable the face grab cinematic. When Which I have seen, caught. I think. Yeah, actually. it's it's a lot. I mean, when you're especially when you're in and you're you know you're it's, in the zone, it's a and lot. that's the thing is it's less it's less seeing it like it would it doesn't it's not like upsetting to me or anything, but it's more the the like jump scare factor along with the the imagery being kind of disturbing. That's like oh, yeah. oh okay, this is this yeah. this might be in a little on the intense side we'll see though i don't know yeah yeah um and I, I i would highly recommend if it ends up being over the line trying it with the face grab cinematic turned off sure. um because that can help well i'm not uh, gonna play it by myself well yeah no no don't do that i've tried that it's 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 a it's a bad time <laughs> so yeah um but what can i uh sort of the the takeaway the bottom line of a year uh in haunting um is that when you're in the dark and when you're exploring the fringes and edges of what you expect with friends online because all of these are multiplayer right when you're doing that with friends when you're collaborating there is a certain kind of camaraderie that happens when when you're able to face and overcome a threat and it becomes hopeful yeah. and through there um i think despite my misgivings and and prickliness about you know any of these games um they've given me a dear gift and yeah. I, I look forward to exploring the dark more and uh if and, and, and extending that invitation you know if anyone wants to explore the dark and i'm with you that's something i found fascinating especially when you um with phasmo in particular when you play by their rules which is you know things like do not use discord for a voice call oh yeah only no. engage with our mm -hmm. in-game systems like when you are doing it in that sense that camaraderie you're talking about that kind of shared experience well, is much more visceral i don't want to say visceral is a bit too harsh of a word but like it's the I kind of you. thing where it's like you can no longer communicate with this person what happened to them are we having some kind of interference are they are they okay oh no right like, because it's right. someone you know it's not just like some and a cool random thing, npc <laughs> a cool <laughs> thing about phasmo to me that speaks to what you're talking about here is when i i initially did not buy it when it first came out because i was like well i'm not going to play with strangers and i'm not going to play by myself and then a couple friends got into it and pretty quick like a week after it came out a couple friends were interested in checking it out so i was like okay well i'll get this then and then you know my um my, I think I played with you, Jeff, and my partner yep. was like, well, this looks fun. I'm going to pick this up. And then we played together some, and I sort of fell off playing it a little bit because that initial release was fairly thin content-wise, yeah, and I felt like I kind of got my fill. But um, but my partner was was continued to play it and started, like, um, dabbling with some, like, playing with other, with, in, like, public. It, well, actually, what she did was she used the... Uh, the the phasmo official discord and started trying yep. to like oh. meet up with some people there and start playing nice. and so and then a few times i started playing with some of the people she was meeting and it was what was so interesting to me is um you the speed at which you go to like from awkward about like these are people i have I've, these are basically strangers to me to being comfortable like talking about what's going on is is really fast in phasma it is like it so is. much faster than when i've played other like co-op shooters with voice chat on or, or like you know competitive games with voice chat on um this game is more is so like 
oh no, even if these people maybe would be distasteful to me in other contexts, somehow we're able to like get along and communicate in a way that doesn't feel awkward or forced because the game demands just enough communication where there isn't enough dead air. I mean, anybody can 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 say shitty stuff, but there isn't enough dead air for things to get really um gross and right. like make me want to like quit. Uh but there is not so much communication that it becomes too exhausting to 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 manage. So, yeah, I think I think it's very effective at that. Yeah. Because you're people of science. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Do do you think it's the nature of how it's basically universally cooperative rather than having any kind of, you know, uh not combative, yeah. but you know like uh antagonistic relationship with your teammates, like it's just purely cooperative? Could that be a factor? Yeah, I think that's a factor. Um, another factor also it seems to be the way that, um, especially if you get p people who are really scared by Phasmo, who are like there, they buy into the horror. Um, and you show any kind of competence, and I really do mean any kind of competence in navigating that and like taking things off their plate, going, "Hey, you know what? You don't have to do the spirit box. Why don't you? Why don't you just head, just chill in the van? It's cool. Watch for ghost orbs for me. I'll go in." I'll, I'll do the spirit yeah. box and they're, and they're like, Oh, Oh, thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then yeah. all of a sudden that it starts building off yeah. of that. Yeah. Cause they can still contribute. Yeah. I think there's also a potential one. Also, I think that the genre and concept of the game does sort of put off people who are genuinely just trolls who want to say like slurs into a microphone at people. Yeah. Right. You, you get such a small audience for that in Phasmo and it's, there's so little, to be done if you're going to be that kind of person that it's i think it's it's kind of mostly like now nah, you're better off going to play a competitive game if you're going to do that frankly um yeah. but the other thing that's that is what's so one of the weird things about phasmo that is so good is you know we played once with this person who was a was kind of a jerk and we were talking about music setting up my partner played with them a couple times and we were talking about really liking Coheed and Cambria and he was just like a like can't believe everyone who likes Coheed and Cambria is, is like a, is, is a fucking asshole I can't believe you guys like them and stuff and it was just really really like it's like I remember there were some Coheed fans in high school and they were all just total pricks and uh and and so I'm surprised that that band even exists still and one of the great things about Phasmo is I was like whatever dude and I just like walked away yeah <laughs> and then I didn't hear him anymore yep and then oh, no, yeah. later yeah. on he died and we were like, oh, that's too bad. Well, we're like halfway through the evidence, so we can keep playing. Whereas yep. when it's my friends, I'm like, okay, well, if you died, we can just reset if you want. You're like, we don't have to play it out. You, but you just like, oh, the context, spirit of, I was like, nah, you of... can be dead and chill in the van for the next half hour. That sounds good to me. Yeah. You're uh, like, <laughs> I, I was protected by the spirit of Claudio Sanchez. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so I think there's this what the fact that you can like walk away and then you stop yeah. hearing the person is yeah. like yeah. a weirdly effective tool for kind of moderating your experience with other people too. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. That's fun. Uh, which is kind of cool. Yeah. So that's what I have to say. All right. Nice. That's awesome. I have both Paratopic and Ninth Link installed now, so I will check. Excellent. Those. After yeah, my racing I, today, it's 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 full spooky season. I, I have mirror and mirrors here. installed now. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that one looks. Uh, I'm gonna see if I I want to do th these other two first and yeah. see if I get <laughs> it in me to do mirror layers. Looks rough in a good way, but mm -hmm. uh, it looks very unsettling. <laughs> I love it. I, I wonder if we'll get another like mega hit horror franchise like outs like final fan or not final fantasy uh what am i saying <laughs> silent hill <laughs> like, uh, silent hill and resident <laughs> evil still are like the stalwarts of like the mainstream uh and i hate to yeah. say it five nights at freddy's well yeah, yeah. you're you're right but you're a good right. good a right. good horror because <laughs> Like Five Nights at Freddy's is like very it's it's like it's a one trick it's, pony. It's jump scares. Yeah. yeah. No, no, and I'm not saying it's good. I mean just like yeah, yeah, yeah. in the mainstream popular yes, you're right. like, you can go to Target and buy Five Nights at Freddy's merch. Like this, this is true. That is that is accurate. 
it's, um, it's impressive that uh, Amnesia, which didn't quite ascend to that level, but mm -hmm. was you know pretty mega popular with games. Yeah. It's amazing that they were able to get to to make three games without yeah. it. And, you know, Soma to some extent by association, um, mm -hmm. without it feeling too stale. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's pretty cool. And I'm also one well, of they, the few. They didn't even make the, the yeah. They didn't make a sheen for pigs so. No, but I'm one of the few Machine for Pigs defenders. I think maybe that's my favorite Amnesia game. <laughs> but uh, yeah. it's, it's it's what I regard to be the best one, too. Um, so right there with you, Pat. Uh, but the the I think as far as major franchise, what we've seen is not, the central, like, triple A sort of horror game franchises. Uh, it's going to be a minute before we see another one, I think. Especially I mean, Dead Space is, like, coming yeah, back. Dead Space but... is coming back. Um, and they keep threatening another Silent Hill. Um, but as far as I know, there are no Silent Hill games made after four. What are you talking about? <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't I, know. I was, I was looking forward to Downpour, and I was, oh, mm. man, it's bad. Oh, it was, mm. uh, Apparently, Shattered Memories was sorry. great. Okay, heard, yes. Yeah, yeah I haven't played it, but I've heard good things about that. Yeah, yeah uh, Shattered Memories, I can get on board with. Yes, right. that apparently that new <laughs> Fatal Frame game is good unfortunately uh, unfortunately uh, but um, i think to, to sort of connect to what you were saying at the beginning though jeff mm -hmm. i don't think triple a is capable of it anymore i don't think that right. they're i think that it's too, it's too risky you, and you need a degree of cruft and a degree of um of uh not narrative not obtuse in a narrative ambiguity way necessarily but yeah. obtuse in a turn in, in the sort of design like extremely slick horror games are not scary and yes don't aren't effective um yes. i think like the yeah. the super massive gets as close to it as possible uh -huh. and i don't find them they're like going to see an annual horror franchise Mm -hmm. at the movie theater which is what yeah. they're going for so it's fine yes so they're not particularly yeah. scary they're just fun they're more fun yeah. than anything right yeah. they, they don't the they fantasy don't, if yeah. they don't make you feel the same way right. that like silent hill does so <laughs> yeah. Pat, Pat, if i may offer one exception to the rule i think alien isolation was a pretty fascinating take on a a relatively triple yeah. a e developer like a creative assembly yeah. whether or not they're AAA, that's for yeah, but, debate. but you know, like the high profile kind of thing that was effective. They were dipping so much into some experimental ideas yep. with the okay. way that the, the, the that it was going to react to you. That I think that that yes, it's it's kind of stabbing at the exact thing that I'm talking about, and it does have a layer of jank on it, <laughs> too. You yes, know, it does, <laughs> yes, it does. Uh, and, and one thing that uh, I mean, there's a whole bunch of things I like I could go on for hours about, but like. One, the PTification of horror mm -hmm. cannot be overstated. These so days, it is it is so prevalent <laughs> in like everything. Yeah, PT like even is everywhere. <laughs> like Resident Evil Village has yeah. an entire section that's just basically PT. <laughs> Resident yeah. Evil Village like, is awesome. One of my favorite games yeah. of the year. I love it. Yeah. But it wasn't scary. <laughs> no, it, it's it's uh, an it's an action game with horror. Yeah, there, were, there were moments. There were moments where I was like kind of yeah. getting the willies when I was getting chased by certain enemies. But like, yeah. it wasn't scary. Yeah, it didn't. I didn't lay in bed at night thinking about it and feeling unsettled by it. Uh, yeah. yeah, like it, they, they're not chill as art games. You know, like chill as art. If if you yeah. if there are any listeners or anyone here. Who has not checked out Chilla's art? Yeah, I still I haven't either, and I probably should. Dude, okay, yeah, two no. games, two <laughs> games, two games. They take an hour and thirty. So we have convenience store. Yeah, that's the one that looks the most interesting to me. So play that one first, and then night delivery. Yeah, and and which is a great commentary on institutional ableism in Japan. Yeah. So, um, yeah, no Chilla's art. Like Chef's Kiss, um, that's the stuff. That's the stuff, uh, nice. and I think that's where we're going as far as like horror games are concerned. It's just more and more indie, yeah. and more and more local, and more and but, more just sort of crufty, janky, but it's at the same time really interesting. Yeah, it's and it's interesting because it's a similar thing. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I kind of went on my little MMOs in 2021 journey. It's similar from a genre perspective, like totally different kinds of games, but 
in both cases i'm think i feel like because games are so much easier to because it's so much easier to access the tools to make games now i don't want to say that they're easier to make than they used to be but I, it's so much easier to access the tools uh and there are so many like asset well, sets and stuff you don't necessarily have to be a 3d artist and an animator in order to make a game now you could just work with tools and assets that are out there and buy them and then design things it it just means that i think the indie development community is the place where the most interesting developments in things like mmos and things like horror are going to continue to to occur yeah yeah all right Speaking of MMOs, there's one that's really fucking broken. Yeah, in oh, the news. That, that is, it's, a pretty hor- it's a pretty horrifying uh, bug that they've got there. It's... Mm. <laughs> Cheap. Mm. Yeah. So, okay, in our news, uh, New World, Amazon's MMO, uh, has, has some interesting quirks to its, uh, to its executable. And I have a hundred hours um, of this game. It's safe to say that I've, I've wait, been you, enjoying this. What? Do you have a hundred yeah. hours in this game already? What the probably fuck? A, probably ten or so of it was sitting in queues. So um, no. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I've, I have a lot of time spent in it. I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's deeply problematic and so, from so many directions, as we, as I always want to point out when we bring it up. But hey, I thought it was fun to play, uh, fun to click on trees and chop down chop them down and you know get wood uh well now that it's done melting 3090s and other graphics cards uh it is decided uh new world has decided that it's just going to be client side authoritative behavior basically if you like minimize the game and just like grab hold of the window you can like become invincible and the game just kind of continues on but your your uh, character is unaffected right this is this is 100 percent a multiplayer game by the way this is an mmo (laughs) well and not not only that a deeply pvp focused yes i saw i think last week before even like i think before last week's podcast i even saw someone saying there was a bug where people were just like minimizing or you know their game window in pvp and becoming invincible and it was a That's it was amazing. a problem. Well, I mean, um, I mean yeah. there's things like right now you can cast a certain healing spell, and then if you crouch, it just heals you back to full health. So it's just people walking around crouching and attacking because they keep going. They can get a whole train of like PVE enemies and just keep crouching, and then <laughs> do start like AOE burning them down and get God. tons of experience, and they just have to keep crouching. It's just so funny. You can get a damage scaling room on frost gauntlets that give it nine thousand percent damage scaling, so you can just do like what? billions of damage to Hell yeah. uh, to, to people. Um, like what? the game hangs as it does the math, and then the, <laughs> and so, then the person just dies. That's <laughs> a catastrophe. So, but Andre, the thing you were alluding to with this. The the people are injecting like HTML kind oh, yeah. of like, well, or like yeah, little HTML scripts, too, yeah. which I think is hilarious because this is basically yeah. baby's first introduction to SQL injection. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, I've, like there, there have been like things like this in games, like I, like you know where you can make like your name do like crazy shit, like you've got a yeah, wavy sure. name or whatever, or like yeah. you track know, mania uh, reveled this, in that. Yes, yes, but this By is. Design, yeah, and this Quake is and, not. Yeah. This is not good. This so, is people are putting things into chat, and then if you like mouse over certain, you know, if you mouse over like part of this like text, it'll crash your game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you mouse over it, that's amazing. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's what's happening. What, that's what, what really this? What we're learning is that New World all along was some kind of combination of like. The, the Pony Island Doki Doki Literature Club, mm-hmm. like, <laughs> let's get weird with your PC. And, uh, like, uh, or, yeah. And there's an inscription tie in in here somewhere. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, oh man, what was the other thing I was thinking? That, uh, that, oh, I like Hypnospace Outlaw, kind of like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, we're, yes. We're, we're, we're finding weird ways to communicate. That's clearly what, or, what um... this is all about what i'm saying hacknet 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's totally broken. I think that there's, I think it's likely that they will fix it over time um, because Mm -hmm. people seem to like the playing of this game. And, um, and, you know, Amazon has unlimited money. They better fix it. Like, uh, if they, like, you know, know, or they, well, I mean, it's an MMO. Like, the whole idea is it's a live game, it's a service game, it's going to continue theoretically uh, exactly yeah it doesn't always yeah. work but yeah i mean i think they could also say never mind and refund everybody <laughs> theoretically <laughs> they, they could um, they could they have, they have and, the money and, that that would like kill them or something but yeah because like sorry i haven't played new world but it is a subscription game it's not a guild wars type situation right it's not a subscription. Yeah. there's no subscription oh there is no okay well that's that's less no. that's less bad then if it was a subscription yeah. game, they would have to change and that like only immediately. It's a forty dollar game, forty dollar yeah. game too. It's not even like a full price sixty dollar okay. thing. That's so. that's less egregious, but it's still funny. <laughs> yeah. That's why I think it's funny. If I was also paying a subscription fee, I would be like, "Fuck this!" But the fact yeah. that I spent forty bucks on it, played it for almost a hundred hours, which is plenty yeah. of time to get out of a yeah. forty dollar game, I'm kind of like, "Whatever." <laughs> if it's just broken forever, it's fine. I got plenty yeah. of stuff to play. Hilarious. Yeah. It's not like I feel bad for Amazon. So <laughs> right. no. does does it have like an active like competitive scene in any capacity? Well, the whole game is built around your server constantly in conflict for territory. So right. it's like so, Dark Age of Camelot in that way, where sort of yeah. where you're like fighting um wars are happening basically every day for which are big changes. pvp yeah it doesn't ever change and they're big <laughs> p- 100 player pvp battles where you're kind of Pick fighting over bloom. stuff to change for yeah for uh for um cities to change hands and then in those cities the now ruling guild can like set tax rates and and um control the upgrade flow of like the crafting upgrades in the city and stuff like that so oh like uh, cruelty squad is, sure it's constantly <laughs> there are players that are constantly P- i mean it has open world pvp you can flag for yeah. pvp and then you're fighting so there's not an esports okay. scene for it but there's absolutely a constantly rolling pvp conflict occurring which is completely shattered by all this yeah totally that's and, that was and also, what i was getting at it's like they it's one person. server transfers and people found out that like you can there's something with the server transfers where you can like dupe gold so people can like <laughs> get extra money. There's things that they didn't think about, like server transfers opened up and there's like guilds, the whole guild would tran- decided to transfer off a server and then their city is just left like derelict basically because they're not there anymore. <laughs> That's and, amazing. And, and other factions would, will go, wait, no, why would we bother taking it? it's just going to stagnate forever. So let them have this like dead city that th- there's no value in anymore. And then, then they're stuck with, and then what happens is the way it works is like, if I want to you, if I need a tier four armor smithing, um, uh, table for, to make my next level of armor that I want to make, um, I have to pay a tax to whoever, whatever guild owns the, the table, like owns it. Um, so if if there's a city that my faction owns that the guild that owns it is gone, then why would any other faction conquer it? Because it's going to force me to go to their cities and use their upgraded crafting tables because there's no guild left to upgrade the crafting tables in this one city that I'm in. Uh, so, so it's stuff like that. where it's- Everyone was fucking terrified of the colonialism aspect of this, but they should have been terrified of the gentrification. For sure. Right. I mean, at the end of the I, day, colonialism is only as I, deep as the cover of the game, really. <laughs> but, I, but... I saw someone talking on Twitter about how the economy is just right now completely fucked. Yes. Um, in this game, it's like people are people are bartering. People have have resulted to bartering because they don't want to like spend money at all because well, like also, it, because of the was, value. Of, there is reason. or was a bug where if you're not online when your act- auction house auction pays out, then the gold just disappears. You don't get it. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so like people went from having millions of gold cycling through the economy oh which is God. the way it's supposed to work 
Jesus yeah. Christ, what a but scam. Then, but then <laughs> but then the gold literally just started falling into a black hole. And it's like, well, wait, now we all need tens of thousands of gold like, to keep up with what we're doing. It all, but yeah. It all, yeah. Okay. So it, all, like, it all went into Jeff Bezos' account. Yeah. Like, like sure all, all, all joking aside, like, this is one of the clearest indications for players of the value of QA and how oh, hard, yeah. how yeah. hard but, it is to QA like, something know, that is being actively deployed to millions of people what's like, so weird is they they this game has been in constant testing for like yeah. the last few years with with a, a i think like a few thousand people strong testing force and one of the things that made it that made me interested in it is that i know several people who are testing it and they were always like yeah it's so good they do everything that they, they talk they communicate with us sometimes they take our ideas sometimes they don't but like the dev team is really it feels like an indie studio the way that they're like constantly talking every day to to the testing community and i was like oh okay well i don't like amazon but hey maybe this team internally is like actually they get it um and i still think maybe they do but it's so weird to me that it took like a month after this game to come came out for all of this stuff to like surface the first few weeks like the first week there were the queues whatever that's every mmo um yeah, right. and then for a couple of weeks there we were playing and it was like whatever this is good this is fun we're excited for the next time the content mm -hmm. comes out for it because we're almost out of it after a couple hundred hours um that my friends have played and now all of a sudden after a month later it's like completely on fire <laughs> <laughs> well it's just one exploit gets found and then it's just you know cascades it's, yeah yeah it's just wild that it took as long as it did and anyway, inexplicable you don't have to game, games are weird uh all right well let's see there's some quick hits we can hit on the news uh like sony forming a playstation pc label for its push of games onto pc sure that makes sense all right uh we, did, we talked about god of war last week so yeah they've got god of war uncharted coming to playstation presumably other stuff too like they're not yeah. going to stop so there, there was a funny discourse around this uh within the past couple of days where i forget who it was was it uh shuhei yushida that was showing uh horizon running on a steam deck and everyone was complaining about like oh man i miss the vita <laughs> basically like that's what it turned into it's like wow sony's supporting other people's handhelds more than their own kind of thing which you know whatever to mm -hmm. it was just an interesting little mini set of discourses sure. that was going on right yeah uh so yeah that's that's going to keep happening also in sony news you can now like save a run in returnal like mid run that's and good. like close the game and go away and then you can come back and it'll still you can go back to that run that's innovation right there yeah. that's, it's, now it's, this that's, is epic that's courage yeah that's cool because returnal is a really good video game that i think fairly was criticized for not having those yeah. features and i'm glad that they're in because it, people it does not it. that does not change the value or like the experience of that game in any way absolutely yeah. not no like no 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 anyone who is saying otherwise literally being able to pause the game and like play something else in the middle of a run or you know do whatever that's i got a phone call the only you're right you can't save scum or anything like it's not yeah the only yeah. thing that i would that i would say if you are like i can't imagine putting a rundown and then like coming back to it four or five days later and because I'd be like, oh, boy, where am I? What have I got? Sure. Um, but but that doesn't mean that people shouldn't have the option to do that. Like, yeah. Yeah, I think life happens. Yeah. Life comes at you fast. Always does. Like <laughs> the Nintendo Switch online's emulated N64 oh games. God. Maybe I, mean, I don't know. Maybe it's come at you slow. I, I don't know what's up with these games, but people are not happy with uh, the emulation solution for these N64 games. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll post a link in the show notes to the video that MVG did. We've talked about MVG many times on this show because he's just fantastic. He's a developer himself, so uh, he came at the NSO uh, N64 emulation from. The perspective of someone who has used and worked on n64 emulators from a community perspective and the mm -hmm. fact that 
this officially sanctioned released for bucks one by Nintendo yeah. doesn't even perform as well as the community ones, which they have got running on the switch. <laughs> right. Like, like that they've homebrewed got running on the switch. So they're like, they know the hardware is capable of running it better. It's just that this solution that was offered is, is, is bad or yeah. at least not as uh, good as it's, you know. it's a Nintendo like solution. They, they wanted it to be as faithful to the N64 as possible. I'm probably not because it sounds like it's not even that good. Um, yeah. it, it's, it's a, it's a good watch. Uh, very recommended if you have, I don't know, 10 minutes. He's, Nice. He's very he's very good at articulating these kinds of things in a pretty easy to understand way, even if you're not like a programmer. Also, I've heard the controller situation is not great. Like the controller mapping is it's not good. Uh, I don't know exactly oh, oh, what's up. Oh yeah, with that, but yeah. He did I've talk heard about that. People saying like there's no like you can't remap controls at all. Nope. And like the the N64 had a weird layout, where it's like you know it had the c buttons it had the a a and b and then it had the four c buttons and then like the triggers and the yeah, z button I, and i think i think it's something like a and b are still a and b but then the c yeah. bu- c buttons are like x and y and then the two triggers or something like it's something weird yeah, I, I, can't, I don't remember yeah, exactly what it is but it, and you can't change it so <laughs> yeah exactly yeah it's just very strange um yeah. kind of half-baked nintendo come on. nintendo <laughs> Uh, next up, Shoji Meguro, Meguro departs Atlas, uh, going yeah. to work on indie games. Okay, that was kind of uh, surprising. Was what, what? Who was uh, Meguro? Who? What did he do? The, the, the composer. Oh, yeah. composer. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Which is man, it's a bummer. <laughs> so we're yeah, gonna like, be getting a lot of Persona Five vibes from some uh, video game, from some indie <laughs> games then. Yeah, well, I was I was listening to the Persona after I found that I was listening to the Persona Five OST while going on a walk. Yeah, Shoji like, Meguro is like fucking good. I would say, especially for three, four, five, like that's the music is arguably one of the most iconic parts of oh, absolutely modern, modern Persona. Yes, that's good. So, yeah. I wonder I what still have they'll... the mask. Oh yeah, I, I wonder. Like, Sorry. Oh no! You just pull, yeah, like you said, pulling up an indie game, and then suddenly the it, music just goes hard, and you're just like, "What?" And then you realize, "Oh yeah, yeah." I... Yeah, but but it also makes me wonder, like, what do they do for Persona Six? Do they go with someone yeah. else, or do they bring them on as a consultant, or like you know, a, a contractor, contractor rather? <laughs> yeah, if I was if I was Atlas, I'd be like paying him absurd amounts of money to do Persona Six. <laughs> I honestly, bet, I, bet, I bet also that you could. I don't know. I bet there are talented composers that you could say, "Hey, sure. here's." What oh, there what absolutely like. are. Can, yeah. can you can we get totally. something that has like a similar yeah. vibe? Yeah, give um, New Blood I, a chance. Sure. In, in to some extent, this almost seems like it's only positive to me because it means that there's going to be a wider set yeah. of games out there that has this this kind of that kind of vibe and style, which is awesome. So yeah, yeah. no, I, I but yeah, I man, think I would his agree. music is so good. Yeah. Uh, all right. It's Skrillex to do it. Hey, yeah, please, no, Hearts. no, no, it is. <laughs> yes, I did. That song is great. Maybe it's it's like it's not. Uh, yeah, or that one know. moment Good. in Far Cry. You'll yeah. never see it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> yeah, no, I, genuine. I, I'm not. Jeff has, I, this Jeff is has not turned some bit. full plague doctor on us. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bit i like face my fears a lot just for anybody listening i think that's great right. i understand i understand and i respect you pat i i just i i don't i have to <laughs> i uh, skrillex does this to me <laughs> i don't understand <laughs> it, it just it's okay. You have some sticks that you need to remove from some places. I, I, it's, it's, it's not about Skrillex for me. It's just, it's that, that genre. You don't is, like dubstep, doesn't, is what, yeah, it saying. just doesn't, it, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's a dubstep thing, not a, it just doesn't, does nothing for me in any way other than go, God, oh, why'd you ruin this? Oh, no, I'm, I, I like, I like tasteful. There's, what I don't like is dubstep. like, when I first listened to dubstep, it was people, who were like, you got to check this out. And it was like dubstep remixes of doom songs. And it was like, oh, this is, this is 
well, garbage. But I like I like like actual dubstep. Like I like Skrillex. I like like Flying Lotus. I like like the wide range of dubstep. Flying Lotus has some sick dubstep tracks. Yeah, um, I, I I I associate Flying Lotus with like the new jazz movement. Um, yeah, yeah, no, the, for sure. But but a lot probably. of the his early stuff is is dubstep. Um, huh. Okay. Yeah. The, also, there, there's good stuff out there. I would recommend checking out the dubstep remix of Dayman from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. That one's so actually the very only, good. The only good, funny. The only good dubstep is in Trackmania. I'm so uh, glad you brought this up. Trackmania <laughs> hoovers a lot of dub, good dubstep, yeah, but also a lot of bad dubstep too. Well, sure, but the, that, is, that, that is good dubstep. Oh, what uh, was that, Jeff? I have something for you uh, because yeah, you okay, mentioned good. you mentioned it, and I may have created a music video to exactly the Dayman step uh, thing that you're talking about. Hell yeah! Um, um, because <laughs> I actually uh, I'm friends with the creator uh, Joe Man. Joe Man, who yeah. did that. Yep. Uh, he's a really cool guy. Definitely follow him on TikTok. Uh, but yeah, like he is delightful. I'm going to put it in the Discord real quick. Lovely. Uh, Looking forward to and, it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, y'all can have that. And there you go. There Looking you go. To this. I see. Thank you. Dark uh, Souls stream intro. <laughs> okay. Solaire step. Because oh, if you're thinking uh, of Dayman, who yeah. else do you think? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. All right into the show notes that goes also obviously <laughs> uh, the only the only proper dubstep song that i would say is like i enjoyed was a remix of i knew you were trouble by taylor swift that i oh, accidentally that's a good one i oh, accidentally yeah. like i thought was the original song but then and like but then my friends were like no this is not the original I'm like yeah. i don't know this is just what i downloaded it came and i don't know that uh, I, is what made it, me like that taylor swift album yeah so uh, i don't care about the album i just like that song i i had never heard adele's set fire to the rain i only ever heard the dubstep remix as my my <laughs> initial <laughs> Uh, exposure really, to it that's really funny <laughs> anyways yeah. anyways persona bring in some mm -hmm. dubstep i guess oh god no <laughs> <sighs> i can't no um be good next be good. up uh two quick marvel ones marvel's uh, wolverine being written by the same story lead as spec ops the line yeah I saw that news and I just went, what the fuck? That's awesome. The Wolverine is going to be using right. some white phosphorus on some people. Oh God. God. But, Jesus like, Christ. But that's, that's... Someone's going to use white phosphorus on Wolverine, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. But that story, Spec Ops line, like, yeah, sure. It's kind of people, revisionist history have kind of been like turning on it, being like, ah, oh, it was all shit the whole time. But like at the time... At the time, it, it, it was it like... was amazing. Yeah. Like it was subversive. It was weird, especially for like a AAA. Like it was very Heart of Darkness inspired. Like in a way yeah. you just not seen in games before. So, if they can kind of do some subversive weird shit with like a Marvel property, I would be super into that. Actually, yeah, maybe. Uh, like I, it, you know, the fact that they're talking that they're doing it like r-rated or you know maybe not r-rated but more mature story and not like trying to do a guardians of the galaxy thing with it or you know spider-man or whatever they're trying to like be true to that yeah. character and more uh more adult that which that could work out which they, That's what they the should past. do they have done yeah, in the past. yeah like uh what was it wolverine origins or x-men origins is that what it was yeah, x-men origins no x-men origins Wait. wolverine the the game like that was an uh, M rated. Okay, that was an thinking... that was an M rated uh, Wolverine game. I'm pretty sure I remember that having lots of like j jibs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't that... like the cut of your jib. Bub. Snicked, bub. <laughs> uh, and also in Marvel news, uh, Skydance, uh, Amy Hennig's uh, Skydance Game Studios, uh, where Amy Amy Hennig is at is working with marvel on a adventure or on some sort of game uh like it's a new legacy yeah. of kane game calling it oh my um, god <laughs> i wish 
I yes. wish. Wait, wait, is that a Marvel property and I didn't know it? Uh, no. Amy Hennig is the writer for oh, Legacy I know. of Kane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know, I know. Yeah. But like, what but if what if it's time. a Blade game that ties into Legacy of Kane? There we go. <gasps> That's the Marvel crowd. <laughs> what if they add Kane to the Avengers? <laughs> like, like to, the, prop, the proper MCU. Done. Old. I'm in. <laughs> Say no more. They're making Those a Blade movie. Aren't they? Totally. They're making Blade a movie, right? Yeah. Yeah. And Mahershala Ali is it Mahershala Ali Blade. Yeah, yeah Mahershala, Mahershala Ali is Blade, which is Blade. That's good casting. Then he says, be, "What about be. Soul Reaver?" And then <laughs> <laughs> that the motherfucker is always trying to reave souls. No, then what I hope is that this Marvel that. game, whatever it is, I don't really care that much uh, about what it is <laughs> uh, to be honest with you. But I do hope that it gives them a huge funding boost so that they can make a Legacy of Kings game. <laughs> so let's be honest, Maybe. like. <laughs> I like the MCU. I like Marvel. We're all tired. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I yeah. like. I was we can thinking say this about Sam's not here. <laughs> yeah. No, I was thinking about this like how like I don't remember maybe I five years ago. Go. I was talking to somebody about like oh god, can't go. Whereas like talking to my dad, I was like, man, I am just like so like into this. You know, it's so great that there's these like they have a formula, but the formula is always interesting. And now I'm just like I'm tired and yeah. exhausted well, of it like like i like, I, like I, it's like and i've liked the individual things that i've watched this year like i liked wandavision i liked uh up until the last episode which i didn't like uh and i liked uh the um shang chi but it's like uh, i'm just Love tired you. man of, it, of it's getting I'm just satur- tired of Marvel. it's getting saturated frankly well even yeah. and when even when there is like a drought because of you know global pandemic it's still like oh my god i came back and i was like <laughs> oh, does it have to they finally it's i was ex- so excited for eternals because i was like finally we're gonna do something a little bit different and it finally like that kingo sucks kingo. so like yeah but yeah. like at least find that concept interesting and it's yeah, like, really it's like so now they're like, never going to make another interesting movie ever again. I am so <laughs> bummed about that because yeah, it, because uh, in theory, I really wanted to like that where it's like interesting concept, new characters that I'm personally not familiar with. Uh, Chloe Zhao, who's like, uh, she's like, a, like a real artist that they've gotten to do this. And it's just like, mm. so sorry, I've been out of the loop on it. What about it sucks? Like, is it just, poor execution so it's, the movie the movie isn't out yet uh yeah, it's no, but the are critical yeah. reception has been real bad uh yeah we can talk after the cast yeah, okay. you know if people yeah. don't want spoilers for it that's fair yeah. but yeah, there's, the reviews a, have been there's a real over. doozy of a of an insinuation in this movie <laughs> that's unfortunate i may still go see it oh yeah curious, i heard of that i have very low expectations for it at this point so we'll um see. i'll just anyway wait for yeah. disney plus that's anyways generally to me that means that's part of why marvel video games i'm just kind of like uh, we'll see mm-hmm. I, i'm yeah, on a wait and like, see with all of them me too like i really love the uh spider-man games but i'm like the rest of them i'm kind of like i apparently like i've heard mostly good things about guardians which oh, yeah. yeah surprising which is, uh, based that's great. on how that game looked but it sounds uh, fun. so like i'll check it out when it's on sale because yeah that's, yeah, that's where i'm at to too play right now yeah yeah, it's awesome that I, I was, is I was so burned though. by Square Enix's uh, Avengers, Avengers, so yeah, yeah. Um, I was burned before. Well, uh, we'll all be burned yeah. again. Yep, <laughs> we sure will be. Get your hand off that stove. Thanks, Mickey Mouse. Uh, <laughs> fuck it. Make Spider-Man public domain, please. Oh, please, come on. <laughs> Emiss- like, the emissary just... of hell. <laughs> Return. <laughs> It's Japanese spider Spider Man. Uh, I thought this already happened. Vicarious Visions dropping its name and fully merging with Blizzard. No, this we already happened. We speculated that that would happen. <laughs> we I, definitely I talked about that. They, they absorbed like all their employees though, like la- earlier this year. Yeah, yeah. I, thought, I thought that was already a thing that happened. Okay. Yeah, but like now it's just kind of like it's officially happening. It's like yeah, Vicarious Visions is no more. Now it's just been huh. sucked into blizzard permanently uh-huh yeah well uh good luck to all those employees and hopefully they can 
you know, make that. Well, they all work at Blizzard place. now. Well, I think. The, yeah, I, I don't think there's anyone that was well, let go. Well, just... Oh yeah. Well, that. Oh well, then everything's fine. They work at Blizzard. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Everything's I, itchy keen. I, I would still say good luck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's more. That was, you know, the more the insinuation. Yeah, hey, good luck totally at Blizzard. <laughs> uh, you know, they were still like in that, like in the parent company, like structure. Uh, but now they're, you know, just good luck with that whole situation and improving it, making it better. Uh, and in the most unsurprising news of the year, also Blizzard related, BlizzCon, BlizzCon Line 2022 canceled. Uh, yep. Because I'm a mess. <laughs> for many reasons. Could you imagine? <laughs> Oof. Yeah. They... Hey, everybody, here's Overwatch 2. And Ooh. oh, God, don't, yeah. uh, don't think about anything else that is going on with our company. I forget the reasons. I think they, the reasons they gave were like, "Oh, we're just gonna focus our time on Overwatch and Diablo development. Like that's what that's why we're canceling it." Right. Like, sure, Jane. Like, what a, uh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. yeah. It's like, yeah, oh, yeah, it's not like there's been just a whole bunch of other bullshit around your company. Uh-huh. Yeah, they're also basically like, you know full empathy to the people working on these games because i'm sure that it's been a real one over there it has been a real one over there for a long time it sounds like and is currently but i have one friend who's really into diablo 2 resurrected and apparently that game is like actively on fire because it just had oh yeah continue it's good it doesn't have a lot of bugs or anything it's just that it blew up in popularity in china and their servers Mm. are global so Mm. it's like huge Uh, login views all over the place Interesting. it's like it's huge in, in, I think, in Korean markets, too. It's huge in Asian markets. And mm. um, so I think because the original D2 didn't come out there, maybe. Oh. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe. But oh, like China, that yeah. wouldn't surprise me because yeah, of, like, yeah. skeletons is and it, stuff. Yeah, is it, I imagine Which it would have to be... Change. So yeah, I don't know if it's more recent relaxation yeah. of that, of those issues with game i don't know anyway i just know it's very popular in asian regions so it's like he said it's like impossible to play in any other any time other than like the middle of the night in (laughs) in 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 china China. um otherwise you're gonna sit in a queue for an hour and blizzard just doesn't say anything they're completely quiet and i I know that um there's a lot of like dwindling population on some wow classic servers which is fine the overall health of the game is okay it's still got like twenty thousand players which is nothing like the millions that WoW has had in the past, but it's plenty to run a few servers and for people to play in mm. perpetuity, yeah. um, especially as like a bonus f- of your WoW sub. But like the servers that are dying, they haven't said anything about merging them. So you basically just have to pay to transfer off of them or uh, there's like nobody to play with. Um, there'll Some of them are down to like a couple hundred players, mm-hmm. which does not work when the raids are like yeah. 40 people, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's it's there, it sounds like Blizzard is just like, kind of a bit of a disaster right now like their yeah. games are kind of well, falling apart like, and as well we, i we, i was seeing play. that uh diablo 2 resurrected is just not working on switch like yeah it just, no, it's like totally they're refunding switch. people like you just can't play it on switch yep. and blizzard not saying anything about it yep i'm just yep. looking up when we talked which about is funny because it's it's really good when... on pc plays well i played a little bit of it and it's it's totally good it's a good remaster of the game um much better than like the warcraft stuff they did there we go uh um back in july july 17th of 2021 uh that's when we started talking about kind of the world of warcraft the exodus that blizzard was seeing and that started as a combination of uh was it shadowlands that was the one that had been most recently released like just the reception on that being fairly negative uh and especially with how the economy had changed alongside this is also when the sexual abuse and worker abuse allegations started bubbling up so it it seemed like there was just kind of a big wave that hit wow specifically and pushed people away and then it's just like all this other stuff has been rising up to the surface alongside it and it's like for a lot of people it seems poisoned right now this this is this is a little bit different because it's less people leaving WoW Classic and more people migrating yeah. to different servers. Yeah. Um, so yeah. it's it, it's it's less that the population of the game itself is taking a huge hit, and it's more that they're they're consolidate people are consolidating on yeah. servers, which is leaving other servers 
with like very low pops. Um, yeah. And that's it, also wow, classic, not wow, like yeah, the current, yeah. whatever the the modern. Yeah, yeah Owen Wilson's still, wow. Yeah, uh, yeah anyway, whatever it's whatever the modern iteration is, but yeah. Um, so yeah, Blizz, Blizzard having having a normal one. Yeah, <laughs> having a time. Uh, and speaking of canceled oh, well, conventions, well, actually. You know? Did we ever talk about? Because I think it happened this week. We didn't write it down. There was the Bobby Kodak tweet thread that he put out, or the the thread oh, that came out about all yeah. the changes they're making. Like he's cutting his salary to sixty k a year, and like all this Which other is stuff. Like, and uh, yeah, like they're gonna they're and gonna. He has no in, other sources of income, so he's really nope, gonna struggle. Nope. Yeah. Say, like what but, what what's your level of like bonus and stock options? Yeah, and, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But like it, it was a lot of stuff beyond that. It was like they're gonna be implementing more yeah. hiring practices. <laughs> zero um, tolerance policy like, on like, like and harassment and yeah like and i will say that stuff love to work in a business that doesn't have a zero tolerance policy for harassment <laughs> come yeah, on yeah but like it, it seems like they're making at least small steps towards like positive changes whether or not they actually end up you know it, we have to we i don't think we can take them at face value like they're saying all these things, but it's the kind of thing where you have to kind of wait and see like six yeah, months and see, see, see what the employees are saying about it. And you know, yeah. for sure. what we get, see what happens with organization. If like things get unionized, if uh, like, you know, getting rid of things like forced arbitration and uh, is, is good. It's good to have those things removed so people can have recourse if something happens. Um, but yeah, yeah. Until like, we see it, like the actual impact and what the employees at the company like think, then it's hard to say either way. Yeah, uh, yeah. Anyways, I it'll be interesting to see, but it's just we I we didn't write it down, but it's just worth a quick conversation. Yeah, the Bobby Kotick thing, like the the pay is that thing is stupid. It, it is. It's, it, it's, it's, who cares? It's it's, it's a not publicity stunt. Anything. Yeah. 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 Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh no, he's down to sixty k a year with his couple billion in the bank like okay. oh no fucker makes three times more than i do for, you know in the salary for fucking yeah like they should they should be making that the base salary for you know uh entry level contracted qa yeah. people now yeah is that is, is that what like the lowest people at uh at activision make yeah probably know, not or... <laughs> frankly yeah exactly like why are you making more than anybody at that company right now yeah. uh anyway. so, and, anyways Speaking of things that are canceled, PAX, <laughs> PAX South Forever. Yep. P PAX South, not PAX South Forever. PAX South for never because it's been canceled uh, yeah. for I indefinitely. Yeah. For the foreseeable uh, not future. Just as a, yeah. Like, uh, despite, you know, even if next year there's no like COVID or anything, there are no plans to. Uh, to have another one anytime soon. Yeah. And uh, it just sounded, like... yeah, the, the, the statement they put out made it look like they, it just never saw growth. It said it was basically yep. the same attendance, the same everything since 2015. So, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. with the show not running last year, they're like, well, should we just run it ever again? And it seems like the answer is no. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm who's, I don't think, I think there's going to be a lot of people who maybe in this period will, come to the conclusion that maybe we don't need to go to PAX every year. <laughs> uh, Speaking of saturated. A, right. <laughs> yeah. And I was mm -hmm. like, just thinking about this when this announcement came out, I was just like, man, I love the vibe of PAX. I love like yeah. going and being in a space where there's just like all these people around to talk about video games and it's really, and it's fun. And like, at least the at PAX prime, it's a pretty diverse group of people and, and it's, it's cool. But yeah. also, like, I don't care about playing video games before they come out anymore. I have enough to mm -hmm. do. Yeah. I well, have games that are out. I have whole panels games. are cool. But the like, thing is, I don't really follow most game podcasts and media anymore either. So I, I don't know. Yeah, like, I, I think the thing about going to PAX in, when was the first year I went to it? 2011, uh, PAX East. That was before, you know, early access was such a thing that was like i think minecraft was kind of doing it at that point but that was the only one you weren't seeing like 
big studios doing early access and demos of you know alpha builds and all that kind of stuff like that you can that play was... a lot of these games in the comfort of your home now when they do like the steam next yeah. fest or whatever in the yeah, summer or totally. whatever so that aspect cool. of pax i think doesn't matter as much anymore so it should be more the panels and the not networking but you know like social social gatherings community with these people yeah, yeah community yeah. exactly but it seems like they've been kind of stuck in the ways of the past in my opinion i don't know and also it's just ga big games aren't that like interesting anymore no. like they're they're maybe fun they may be like good they, like i'm i'm in, i'm gonna play forza on game pass next week yeah. But like, are you gonna buy the special edition, the like forty five dollar? Oh, no. It's very clear that that <laughs> game is early just, and that game expansions. is just Forza, so no way. Yeah. Um, okay. Like, uh, but but like Forza, Forza, the new Forza Horizon looks like it'll be a lot of fun. I'm not. It doesn't look interesting. It just looks very looks, pretty and yeah. like another Forza. It, um, AAA's A's so, seem like they don't. They are not nearly as risky as they used to be willing to be 10 years ago. Like they're not willing yeah. to just try weird I mean, shit. And I'm really not being as critical as I sound like age of empires four is a great example of this. I'm having yeah. an, an, a ton of fun with age of empires four. I didn't need to play that game before it came out. It's an age of empires game. It's like, it's, it's, it's like directly inspired by age of empires two, which is one of my favorite games. And so I'm really happy with it, but I'm happy to play that now that it's out. I didn't need to go to a convention to go play it. All, all, Pat, Andre, we all three came away pretty positive on Battlefield 2042, which, you know. Oh, yeah. That played, like, I'm very excited for that game. That's, that's a um, AAA game. It's not being particularly risky. It's just, you know, it's polishing. It'll be a blast. One, it, like there, uh, old concepts. There'd be like no value in playing that at a convention, though. <laughs> no, absolutely yeah, not. not. It's like, oh, you click the left mouse button and the gun shoots. Wow. <gasps> Like, sure. You know, if if You're they were doing like we're gonna a do helicopter drop a tank off for me, uh, <laughs> unbelievable! Wow! Uh, if they were gonna do like, hey, we're gonna do you know like come play a match with you know 128 people or you know however many people are in a match, it was 64 sure. and 64, right? So it's 128. It's like if you know if they were doing like, oh, come play a match with like everyone, do a full thing, not just like oh, come sit at a kiosk and well, you know, shoot some AI or whatever. If, but if they would have done that in March. You oh, know, yeah, be... like, and it, it's like the only place you could do it is physically in this location. Yeah. Then that's yeah. cool. Like that's fine. Yes, like, yeah, there, that's, there is there is an inherent I'm there's saying. an inherent value to that. Yes. So yeah. The, the the coolest thing recently, the two coolest things that happened to me is I got to play Outer Wilds and play it with the art director standing next to me, which was really cool. Um, and then uh, I played Due Process in like a lan environment where it was like we had a close it wasn't even over like discord or something the our, the mics were all just like hardware uh oh, nice. wired yeah. together so we could all hear each other oh, talking and um yeah. it was really cool and that made me go man That's do awesome. process is awesome i haven't played it once since it became available That's on fun. steam because i'm never going to recreate that experience of playing it and those <laughs> things were cool but i i don't know that they were worth I, I don't look at those experiences and go like, man, I can't wait to spend $300 to go to PAX again mm -hmm. and have yeah. like a half hour of experiences on that level. You know, like, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Anyways, well, rest in peace, PAX. RIP. Uh, and uh, this week we'd be remiss if we did not mention the state of play, which was... You know, right. sometimes you got uh, you got marketing obligations to your pu to your publishing partners, and you got to put out uh, uh, some videos, and that's what this seemed like. Yeah, there was <laughs> no nothing, nothing nothing major at all. There there was one there was one big thing. Yeah. <laughs> Big, is it yeah. Big, did you, did you, is it big? Is it a big thing? Big. Are you talking kind of new... bugs, kind of snacks, kind of big. big. <laughs> the kind of snacks. Snacks. Uh, bug snacks DLC. Yeah. It's a free upgrade too. But like, oh, nice. uh, apparently, how, how does that how does that work? Can we talk about the ending know. of Bug Snacks yet? Is that is the moratorium okay, up on um... that? 
Spoilers for bug snacks. Uh, yeah. No, well, we don't need to. Let's just say this: the ending of Bug Snacks does not leave it in a place where you could continue. <laughs> To there look is at a bug point snacks. of no return in the game, basically, where you yeah. where it's like, okay, right. if you go to this point, you won't be able to go back and play more of it. Yeah, so uh, I but assume this kind of like slots itself in before before that. Yeah. I think it does, um, from what it looks like, uh, because in the trailer it looks like they they show um, like your island, uh, the actual island that you're on. Um, and they like they added yeah, like and, a and hut the area. for your character and like you can decorate it and stuff. Um, yeah, you the can, village. You can dress bug snacks uh, up in hats. Let, There's let, more let, bug snacks. Let, let's. Uh, let's it, the village exists in this one, so you can definitely use it. Um, <laughs> so we have to know what anyways, it is. Anyways, the there's, the there's a there's a. There's a giant bunger with uh, <laughs> with uh, tater tots. Um, so you know. Very good. Very good. I am all on board. I'm going to probably restart this game and play, like, try to 100% it with the DLC. I'm so excited. Well, uh, apparently, because of Greg Miller, this game will now have trophies. It was not going to. The DLC was not going to have trophies. And then Greg Miller complained on Twitter, and then that made Young Horses have a meeting. They okay, I guess we're putting trophies in. (laughs) So... (laughs) That's funny. About that. like, I guess. <laughs> and thank Greg Miller or damn him. I don't know if that'll uh, delay the game at all, but I think it's coming next year, right? We're almost there. So, yes. You know. Yeah. Uh, early 2022. So it shouldn't be too long. And so I sometime just... in the next six months, maybe. So yeah. I'm so fucking excited. I'll, I'll quickly run down the list of what showed up there. We don't have to talk about any or of these. So yeah. we got Death vs. Let It Die. We got We Are okay, OFK wait, wait, being that, shown. We'll, that... we'll, we'll, we'll come back to it. We Are OFK. Okay. <laughs> We've got Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. We got Death's Door, which is already out. Uh, we got Cart Rider Drift, KOF, First Class Trouble, which was kind of an Among us kind of uh, like Velvet Sundown almost looking thing. Uh, Star Ocean, the, the Divine Force, Little Devil Inside, and that's it. Uh, uh, Little Devil Inside looks really, 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 really good, but yeah, yes. it does. I, it do- I it looks really good to play. It. it didn't show that great. Like I, I'm gonna play also, it. It looks awesome, but they also keep showing it, and it seems like the kind of game that is so weird and yeah. all over the place that it doesn't can't really glean much from watching it. Like totally. basically, what it's what the value of them showing it is they've had some like missteps with some character designs and stuff that were a little. Uh, on the oh, uncool right. side, and yeah. and but the response to that was, "Hey, it's great that we've learned this now because we have plenty of time to fix it." So, yeah. and they were like, um, "Oh fuck, we had no idea." Basically, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, um, this is a Korean I, I, game, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, they had also, some like um like sort of uh indigenous characters that had some yeah. sort of caricature esque like stereotypical associated kind of, with them. Yeah. yeah, and uh and people called them on it and they're like, hey, we didn't even know that this was an issue, so we're gonna fix it now, and it's yeah. cool. Which seemed more like cultural ignorance, like not malicious. Absolutely, but, yeah, yeah. It um, didn't seem. Yeah. But Andre, you were gonna say about death versus uh, let it die. <laughs> Death first, let it die. That means we get more Uncle Death in our lives. Hope so. That game looks like that game looks like shit. Yeah, but, but so does Let It Die. <laughs> yeah, yep. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that game. It's, I like Let It it's Die like too. A Battle yeah. Royale. Like what is? It's, it's like a, it looks like a MOBA is. kind of. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah I'll try that game on PC again. It's been forever. Uh, uh, still trying. Like they've still they've they're still like yeah they're still doing stuff with Let oh, It yeah. Die. People still like it too. It's, it's got decent reviews and stuff. Yeah, like it's, it's fine and everything. Like it's yeah. it gets a little it's a cool game. Uh, it's is it free to play? And then it gets kind of yeah. like, yes. It gets kind of like yeah, yeah. grindy, or you need to engage with the bucks part of timers. It, yeah. it has like timers yeah. and grind yeah. in it, which yeah. you know, yeah. that's whatever. Yeah. whatever. That's yeah. I, I will say, I'm looking forward to We Are OFK. The little skit they did there was horrendously terrible. I hated it. <laughs> it was just mm. so stupid. <laughs> I yeah I didn't know why I was supposed to care about any of it. No, it was like, bad. So that game looks uh, great. That was a terrible, terrible showing. Unfortunately, because they made, <laughs> they decided to make a very tongue in cheek skit, but it just came across as dumb. Yeah. We got any Star Ocean Star Ocean fans in here? Yeah. Uh, I, 
like Till the End of Time, which apparently Star Ocean fans hate. So. That's not a reaction I, mean, I, know I, was that, expecting, I knew this Jeff. was going to be it. I knew this was going to be a Jeff thing. Uh, 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 Jeff, my my condolences. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know what the thing they showed is because I didn't watch it's, it. But it, it sounds bad. It looks it looks like Xenoblade Chronicles is what it looked like. It looks like what if you took uh, Xenoblade Chronicles, made a version of it at great value, and then sold it at a thrift store, and then proceeded to run over it with a car. Okay. Yeah. The car running over a part that seems like maybe the most problematic. Yeah, experience. So, so basically, you could TLDR that to it looked like a Switch game. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. What? A bad, bad, bad. Okay. Shots. A bad Switch <laughs> game at bat. A bad. Even Switch the, you know, you could just say like, Allison, the trailer was framing. You didn't have to activate Allison in this one. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> the trailer was framing. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. yeah like, like, come I mean, on. Star yeah. Ocean has been on a long decline, and and I'm just sort of like, okay, all right, you're gonna do this to me again, and they are, and yep, <laughs> that's how my life is. It's fine. <laughs> all right, well, that's how I feel about. So I've, you know, I understand. <laughs> I know you do. I know. And then my uh, said that to me. <laughs> Coming up, uh, actually, very soon, uh, First Class Trouble is going to be a PS Plus game uh, looks, in November, which is like the social social deduction game uh, where you're trying to, I don't know, you're trying to do reach like the core of a ship, like a space liner. Yeah, and a space you like, can, like cruise ship, basically. Yeah. And yeah you can Starship Titanic again. Yeah, hell yeah! Like, bring it back. Let's do it. And, yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, oh God, Jeff's frozen Elon Musk, for me. call us. Oh, no. It's great. And, oh no, know, yes. Very, yeah. <laughs> Can you still hear me? Yes. Yes. It's, it's just that now we've entered a, a liminal space with I, Jeff. I have a. I have. I have to depart anyway yes. so well, i can be yeah we can end this podcast yeah well, like, uh, rotating the car around martinsville yeah. speedway all right pat, pat needs all to right. strap himself into a, a virtual vehicle mm -hmm. we can yeah That's we true. can see his uh we can gonna, see his racing chair behind him yeah. we're gonna watch a football game while we race so that can only go well <laughs> uh -huh. just like the real race car drivers <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah um all right. Well, Pat, so you can get going. Where can people find you? You can find me at PJC Plays on Twitter. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. And uh, we'll see you here next week. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck on your race. Thank you. It'll, it's going to go great. <laughs> uh, Allison, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter at W-R-I-T-E-R-S-E-R-E-N-Y-T-Y. -E -E and uh jeff yeah uh you can find me on tiktok twitter and twitch all at the same uh, nick that's at stranger peace stranger as in stranger dangers peace as in peace and love uh put them all together in one word and that's where you'll find me all right and you can find me on twitter at cool slaw c-o-o-l-s-l-4-w and on twitch Coleslaw, C O L E S L 4 W. Wish I could unify those names, but uh, t t someone took Coleslaw on Twitter and they got banned. So, one point. Uh, yep. Forgot about the uh, part. Yep. Alex, where can people find you? Uh, not here next week. Uh, I will. I will no. not be here. I will not be here next week. Um, uh, is it just next week or is it two uh, weeks? Is it... it should just be next week. Okay. Yeah, I will. Well, I will, we'll do our best be, without you. I, my computer will physically be unplugged at the time we will be uh, normally recording. So, uh -huh. uh, well, uh, in the meantime, I am still raising money for Extra Life. That is going on for another like two ish weeks before the deadline. Uh, if you want to get uh, entered to win a Stay Wet t shirt, that's a $10 donation. Or if we hit our team goal of $5,000, we'll give away... There's a bunch of prizes. There's stuff I had no idea we were giving away. Like a Switch OLED is one of them. And then like some Joy-Cons and some games. And there's just all sorts of great stuff. So uh, head over to my Twitter. Uh, that's the cool slaw one. And you can uh, <laughs> find my pinned tweet where uh, you can find my Extra Life donation. 
that would be great nice. uh what's our team goal it's the team goal is i don't know where, where's the i don't know where how does this go? there we go gotta go to the team page we are at sixteen hundred and two dollars out of twenty five hundred yep and there's still the 24 hour events yep. to go so yes i will not be doing 24 hours i i do not have that kind of time in my life but i will be doing like a big stream uh on the four 13th for people 14th for me i believe is the plan and then the super gg folks are doing the i think the the 14th all day 13th 13th? for people 14th for me what is that implying (laughs) i i cannot say you're not i'm not i'm not taking (laughs) questions at this time okay noted uh thank you so much for joining us uh that is all from the wet gamer aka your partner's favorite costume halloween costume stay wet gamers nice abject silence yeah, it never happened. <laughs> finally, finally, some respect. <laughs> thanks so much for having me on here. Yes. Yeah, thanks it. for joining always us. Fun. Yeah, thanks, and man. it's always a joy uh, just yeah. being here. And, and sorry again for being late. Oh, my oh. God. No, no, no worries. It's fine. We're, it we happens. were going to be late anyways. So. Yeah, yeah like, Please. like you... Feel we were barely anytime. like not even gonna start when you would like when when you reached out so it's like oh yeah it doesn't yeah it's fine yeah i think we okay. taught we opened time dot italians roughly five minutes before you messaged so yeah. we were just like oh and we were like okay we're like oh, okay that's cool that works yeah. that works <laughs> Um, I'll have the file edited, sent over to, uh, do you want me to just post the Dropbox link in, uh, the podcast channel? 